Yeah. Black excellence seems special, but I want yeah. to normalize the things that are special. I know. Right? I don't want it to be special. I want yeah. it to be normal. Yeah. And I think we celebrate these things being special. And when I have conversations with media people sometimes, you know, they're like, I had a conversation with a, with a, with a woman. And I was, she was explaining. She said, you know, sometimes we don't want to highlight the special people because we mm -hmm. want people to you know, uh, um, have commonality with just a normal person. But I was explaining right. to her that, you know, first of all, these things don't happen that often. You don't get a Tiffany J that has 250,000 students, right? Mm -hmm. And that's able to make millions of dollars in the market. Yeah. So you can't disrespect that story by not highlighting it because right. you feel like everybody can't achieve that. But that mm -hmm. means that that inspiration is missing in their life, right? right? When we go out and we travel and we pack stadiums and we have sold out shows with people around financial education. That has to be highlighted it so does. that you create new archetypes for people to look up to so that they know what their new options are. Right. I appreciate my pops for teaching me how to be a guy. From a boy to a man and ultimately back into the natural state of being to a guy. As guys, we're supposed to always move with that higher self. And I have to be able to execute it. Having knowledge is not power. The execution of knowledge is power. Knowledge makes a man unfit to be a slave. Because the only real knowledge you can get is knowledge of self. This is the highest level. The highest level is ownership. The highest level is power. The highest level is sovereignty. The highest level is higher consciousness. The highest level is when we own our own culture. It's at a very high level. Appreciate it. Not eye level. Mm. A high I like that. that. It's time for a high level conversation. We're here for another high level another conversation. Another high level conversation. 19 keys and this is a high level conversation. Tap in with the guy. Peace family, I'm 19 Keys. Welcome back for another high level conversation. Today, I believe that we are in a crisis to make sure that the next generations have the right role models, the right guides and the right leaders that can help propel them to the next future of generational wealth. We haven't seen our culture have generational wealth in decades, right? Most of the stories that we know about wealth are trauma stories and they're very tragic and today it is time for us to change that conversation and that narrative but it's going to require people who have the expertise who have the knowledge who have the empathy who have the understanding and the know-how to be able to change that narrative. today i'm joined with somebody who has not only talked about these things but built something in a way that has helped you know hundreds of thousands of young girls and women start to gain their financial security this is somebody who's very outspoken, somebody who is from the culture, somebody who has won a plethora of awards and they're in right now conversations and in rooms to where some of the most powerful people in the world are asking her for financial advice. I think that it's important that we highlight people of great magnitude, especially knowing that today there's a war between education and entertainment. And if education wins, then we have a better culture. If entertainment wins, then the same things continue to persist. So I wanted to make sure today that we're having a conversation with what's known as a modern black girl, right? You know me, I'm always trying to present a new culture. And in a new culture, it's, it's ruled by things that are value and things that are good. You know, we can win awards in society, but it doesn't always mean that we're doing something good for society. So when people that have a positive reflection of uh, they have great community, they have actual morals and values, rise up to financial position, right? And also become educators. I wanna make sure that I can do whatever I can so that we together, because I believe that she's the other side of the coin, getting the women together as, you know, you know I'll be getting the brothers together because <laughs> you know we got issues, you know what I'm talking about? <laughs> but anyway, this is a very intellectual, smart, capable, beautiful, intriguing woman who is very intelligent, and today we're gonna to have a high-level conversation. You understand me? We'll talk a little romance, a little finance, you understand me? And if she don't mind, we might get into some spiritual components as well. It is none other than the brilliant, award-winning, successful Tiffany J. Hi, you thank doing? you. Amazing, excited. 
Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you yes. for being here. So I, I want to get into it, right? Let's do it. What do you think about women being able to manage their own money? I mean, we manage everything else. I mean, we're managing the kids, we're managing, you know, ourselves. We're managing everything else. Money is just another thing that we can do, like everything else that we do, and we do so gracefully. What is money to you? It's a tool, and it's, it's a tool to buy back freedom, mm. to help you reach to your higher self. Mm. To yeah. reach to your higher self, that's interesting. Yeah. How have you used money to help you buy back your freedom and reach your higher self? Well, money made me buy back time. Mm. To be, to do whatever my heart desires. A lot of times I feel like in black culture, we don't get the opportunity to explore who we are and what is our place in society mm -hmm. because we got bills, yeah. we got this, we have that. And a lot of times it ties to money. Yeah. And a lot of times the way we grew up is like, you don't need money or mm -hmm. money's demonized in our community as like a coping mechanism because we don't really got much. Um, versus really showing us how to get that so we can get to our higher selves because we all have a positioning in this world. Yeah. And a lot of times money hinders us to get to where we need to be. So it's buying back time to explore. You know, money, I think, is a very interesting topic because I feel like most people, number one, we are in a time of redefining what money is. Right. Right. So money has been come up a, a subject of understanding worldwide where it's the first time where people are questioning you know, and this question is being brought up again, like, what is money? Right. So that's why I asked that, because that's going to have um, an indication on how, you know, we view money and then how we view the sexes and money. And women are getting more money today. You understand me? I mean, By some measures, they're saying they're getting more money than some men, right? Yeah. And, you know, when we hear this brought up, it becomes like a battle of the sexes when it shouldn't be, right? Mm -hmm. Because it should be a collaborative thing because we know that, 50 plus percent of marriages fail because of money issues, right? Right. So if we could solve the money issues within our culture, we can literally save marriages, which is saving mm -hmm. black families, which is creating generational wealth, right? Right. And so I believe that that is a very big thing from an economic position because economics is warfare. Mm -hmm. So regardless of how you approach business or economic policies or economic education, you're participating in a battle to help us win our culture, you mm -hmm. understand me? And win our culture in a way where we can decrease recidivism rates in prison and we can decrease, you know, uh, fathers out of the household. We can decrease, you know, all of the bad stigmas and negative things that exist within our culture. Right. So what I see that you're doing with educating women about finances and stocks, you're on the side where you're actually helping build generational family, yeah. right? And like making sure that like even when a man meets a woman you know or a woman meets a man you know financial literacy is key yeah. you know what i'm saying like if your man ain't got financial literacy or your woman don't have financial number one one of you all have to have it to teach the other right you can't have a financially insecure relationship with neither one of you all have financial literacy mm -hmm. and i was talking to you about this and i want to get your take on it like yeah you know this is a generation that is more becoming dependent on themselves for financial management. Yeah. Right. And so how do you teach women to become their own financial managers when historically, right? You know, if we're going farther back, women yeah. were the financial managers in the household. Yeah. But society wise, when people get money, they look to a financial manager. Mm -hmm. So they don't truly understand money. They don't truly understand markets and things of that nature. So what's mm -hmm. your first step approach? to show them that we're doing it every day, mm. right? To show women that we're managing our money, we're managing essentially decision-making. Yeah, It's just with money yeah. every single day. Rather, it's relationships, something as small as choosing what to wear in a, a business meeting or going out with friends. Like We're making these decisions every single day. Yeah. It's just putting money to it. So even my teaching style, it works because we, we're not, it's it's not financial at all. Mm. It's us talking about, okay, oh, hey, you got an argument with your boyfriend. He's acting weird, yeah. right? What are we looking at? 
What, what's the next step? What are you gonna do? Okay, well, you just invested in this company. The CEO just did this. What are you gonna do, mm. right? Or he's mismanaging money. Or, you know, your husband said he's gonna do this with the money and he didn't do this with the money. Mm. What are you gonna do you next? Gonna CEOs like husbands and boyfriends. Listen, we have, a good, we have a good time. We do, <laughs> and it, it's realistic. Oh. And that's why I think people enjoy it so much because it makes them realize, oh wait, I am doing this every single day. Like I, I am making these decisions that I can do with my money in my everyday life with my children, yeah. myself, my family, my career. Yeah. And once we do that, it opens up a can of worms of possibilities for these women that we teach. They're like, oh my gosh. And yeah. they're into it. I always say like, when you learn financial literacy and you get over that hurdle, like, oh my gosh, I'm actually capable your life has changed yeah. because now you're looking at the world so differently. Everything becomes different because you're like, okay, now I could look at this this way and think I'm not worthy when it comes to just like money making decisions or I infuse it in my everyday life. So a lot of times like um, when it comes to investing, I I'll always remember this one of the first girls we ever taught. She was just like, Tiff, I was on the highway and I was listening to music and I was in traffic and I was so upset and I looked outside and I just saw cat. And I was just like, cat, what's cat? And she's like, I know what cat is. So why do I know what cat is? And what she was referring to was caterpillar, mm -hmm. which what they're fixing everything, the roads right. on the site, infrastructure, all, all the jazz, all the things. And in that moment, it opened up a can of worms. Like she's in traffic, it's deadlock, can't move. And now she's looking into caterpillar. Mm -hmm. And at that time, it was perfect timing for her. And yeah it changed her life. Yeah. She made so much money from that moment because now it's infused in your everyday life and I everything like that. that you're doing. And that's what I want for not only women, but everyone, even kids. Like, yeah. hey, it's literally stocks is all around you. Financial literacy is all around you. From the way you think, the way you look, the way you feel, everything, there's like a stock for that. Remember like Apple, there's an app for that. There's literally a stock for that. And it's decision making on when to move and when not to move and when to do things that we do every single day. No, nah, that's mm -hmm. dope. It reminds me when I was younger, my grandma was in stocks, but oh. you know, we didn't know anything about it. But one yeah. of her main stocks was Caterpillar. Wow. You understand me? So I, I literally remember being in the car, we had this station wagon and my mom pointing out to Caterpillar and yeah. they were having a conversation about how my grandma owns a certain amount of stocks in Caterpillar. Mm -hmm. And I think she ended up like cashing out because she needed it for whatever reason. Yeah. But it, it had me thinking like when I got older, like nobody actually taught us about stocks though. Mm -hmm. We knew it, we knew that they existed. My yeah. grandma had them, but there was never a conversation on, yo, okay, this is the reason I'm investing in it. This mm -hmm. is why, this is how, right? Because if that knowledge was infused early into the conversation and the family yeah. dynamic and it was normalized, right, yeah. I probably would have owned tens of thousands of Caterpillar stock, right. right, from when I was young till now because it would just been something that you're normally supposed to do, mm -hmm. right? And I think that that's the reality of, like, normalizing, like, one of my quotes is that, you know, financial literacy seems special, right? And like yeah. black excellence seems special, but I mm -hmm. want to normalize the things that are special. I know. Right? I don't want it to be special. I want yeah. it to be normal. Yeah. And I think we celebrate these things being special. And when I have conversations with media people sometimes, you know, they're like, I had a conversation with a, with a, with a woman. She was explaining, she said, you know, sometimes we don't want to highlight the special people because we mm -hmm. want people to you know, uh, um, have commonality with just the normal person. But I was explaining right. to her that, you know, first of all, these things don't happen that often. You don't get a Tiffany J that has 250,000 students, right? Mm -hmm. And that's able to make millions of dollars in the market. Yeah. So you can't disrespect that story by not highlighting it because right. you feel like everybody can't achieve that. But mm -hmm. that means that that inspiration is missing in their life, right? right? When we go out and we travel and we pack stadiums and we have sold out shows with people around financial education that has to be highlighted it so does. that you create new archetypes for people to look up to so that mm -hmm. they know what their new options are. Right. When I first learned about options, that was literally my thought process that, oh, it gives us more options. Mm -hmm. Right. Literally. This episode is brought to you by Goldwater. During the time of the recession, we had to just wait on the government to fix things. Mm -hmm. Right. Because we didn't have any knowledge to how to fix them for ourselves. 
Right. And I believe that this current time, this generation is all about, you know, creating solutions to our own problems rather than even figuring out so much, how do we use a political system to do it? How do we use a job to do it? It's all about what can I do about this, right? right? And I think that that's, that's a key function to where we get to a place to where we finally have self-sufficiency, mm-hmm. right? When it comes to black people in trading yeah. stocks, yeah, you know, um, we're not at the top. I think it's Asians that are at the top when it comes to uh, financially trading. Mm-hmm. And, you know, the uh, Asian household model I admire because yeah. especially particularly East Indians, you know, they have the highest household income, mm-hmm. right? Um, and if you look at what they do is they look at the top sectors and they want to make sure that they get into it, right? So if technology and engineering right, is going to be the wave of the future, then that's where their education is going to land, right? right? So when that future comes, they get to get all the money because everybody got to come to them. You understand me? Mm-hmm. So it's like, but for you, I want to ask you a question. Number one, what yeah. do you see as the future of black people for stock trading? Because I know that you have a belief around, you know, SEC being against retail traders. And yeah. now all these black people getting into stocks, all of a sudden we see the switch up. Well, because... It's sad to say this, but like someone got to get preyed on. Mm. That's how the world works. Yeah. Someone it's and unfortunately it's been us for so long because you can't go out and say stocks are so easy. It's just cause and effect. Mm. It is. It's literally cause and effect. But you can't go out and say that because then everyone would be rich. Right. Everyone. You can't do that. Even I think about, you know, even our parents, even them. Right. They didn't even notice how much it was just cause and effect yeah. and how easy it was to just share that information out to us. Mm. They, they didn't realize because of how it was shared to them. So if you put that out to the world, the, we all can't be good. But I think what it's coming down to now is that we're like, enough is enough. Go yeah. pray on someone else. Right. We, we're not doing this anymore. And when it comes to trading, even that it's demonized. Right. Mm-hmm. Trading is probably the most demonized things. Options are so demonized. Why do you think that is? Because I know when we started talking about options, <laughs> everybody that was the stocks, ah, forget all of that. Just focus on this. I'm like, so but ridiculous. if we never know it, we don't even have the option to be good or bad at it. Right. And and essentially options is just giving you more options short term. Mm-hmm. That's all. Right. Long term and really helping you build capital to long term but it it does take a lot so I'm not gonna I'm not gonna come here and say options and trading is just cause and effect because it's not Mm -hmm. that takes a little skill right what about the emotional intelligence that goes into it because I I feel like if you are a good trader which I believe you are how do you develop then that emotional skill set right to where you're not trading based off your feelings it's so funny because I realized this maybe year one in that the biggest issue when it comes to trading is that people don't like to lose. Mm. And I realized that I've took a lot of L's in my life more than the average woman. Like I've took so too many L's in my life um, that I've also been very resilient my whole life because I had to. Yeah. Sink or swim has been my life and I've always been a swimmer. So because of that mentality, I was able to take hit, 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 hit. Right. And be able to get back up. Mm. And that's what trading is. And essentially, the reason why more men are more prone to trade than women is because men take losses all the time. I I talk about it. I mean, let, let, let's, let's, let's really well, get into it, I know black it, right? men got to be used to taking ills. We got to stop doing that, no, but we it's resilient. Not, we, no, Keys, it's not black men. It's men, period. Well, yeah, I know. I'm just like, saying, like, as far as, like, American society. Yeah. You understand me? We, we, we taking ills a lot. No, but let, let, let me, let's paint a, let me paint a story for you. All right, talk to him. Dating, uh-huh. right? I always say this to the ladies because it was mind boggling when I noticed, okay, this is the missing piece. If I, if I can teach the women how to deal with more losses, we'll be good. Mm. I'm actually writing a book all about losses, but we'll go there later. So let's talk about dating. A guy, a single guy, handsome guy, does well, all the things, all the jazz. In New York City, young guy, in a week, he'll probably try to talk to maybe five or six girls. 
Maybe, right? If he's feeling himself, he's good. Mm -hmm. Of that five or six girls, he might get two numbers. Mm. That's not a bad ratio. That's so not a bad ratio. Right? You know. Yeah, it's almost half. Forty <laughs> percent. Let's say even one. Okay. Right? Yeah. Even one. <laughs> Keys. <laughs> Just maybe one, right? And the others might be like, get on my we in New York, so you know, we're gonna give you some attitude. We're gonna give you get on my face, right? We're gonna give you all the things. Right. But let one man having a bad day, same girl, it's beautiful, all the things, job, she's she's that girl, right? Let that man have a bad day and tell that girl, get out my face. That girl is going to remember that for the rest of her life. I promise you she will. Man, that's, that's a fact. That's I a fact. remember men that have rejected me. Mm. I, I do. No. Well, anyways, I, I remember, <laughs> you know, I and a lot of times when it comes to women or even sports, right? Guys do sports all the time. They play basketball with their friends, all these different things. Women, a lot of women, black women particularly, we've never a lot of black women have never played sports in their right. life. Working out, right? There's a lot of things that are infused in culture when it comes to men that right. are not for women when it comes to losses. We don't know how to handle that. And right. when it comes to trading, you're taking losses all the time. But the goal when you are a trader is to take more wins than losses. You're going to take right. L's. And a lot of times when it comes to investing, the women can't handle that. A lot of times, uh, it's, it's mind boggling to you, but I get it now after a year working with the ladies that once they take that loss, because a lot of times these women are, they have to hold everything together for their children for their jobs in these high positions that they're holding and for themselves, for everyone else around them. That the fact that they take that one loss, they probably have had all these wins, but they take that one loss, they question everything in their life. Yes, I agree with that. That's where the practice comes in. So a lot of the work I do when it comes to trading is to let them know that, hey, like you're worthy to take, take, make mistakes. Right. So in my first intro class, I always tell ladies, get ready. Get ready to be mentally stimulated in a way that you've never been before because that's what trading is. And once we start working with the ladies or just even some of the guys, and we, because actually the guys are a little different. The guys, we tell them to slow down a little bit. Yeah. The guys are like, come on now. It's not a slow down. Because we operate off competition. That makes exactly competition, you know, it, it, it helps us feel like men consistent. So as long as we're mm -hmm. competing, right? Yeah. And that's kind of how it is. So in the analogy of a man going out talking and getting one out of five, as long as he's continuing to talk, he's competing, right? right. Which is making him feel good, mm -hmm. right? So that's the difference is that men, a lot of times, sometimes, not all the times, but have yeah. a greater degree of emotional resilience, right? Mm -hmm. And But women have a greater degree of emotional intelligence. Mm -hmm. But women will often think about emotional things at a higher rate than men when those things happen. Right. So you become deeper impressioned by them. Right. Yeah. So this is how it's women have to a lot of times get over certain traumas before they can be good business people or good mm -hmm. traders because they exactly. take those insecurities and they add that into their everyday characteristics. Right. Well, if I'm not good at relationships, why could I be good at trading? Right. Mm -hmm. So you start to well, man, this relationship ain't got nothing to do with me trading. <laughs> literally. <laughs> he could have literally got zero literally. out of five and still feel like he going to be the best trader in the world. Honestly. You know, but I've also heard that women make better traders when they do get into trade. Oh, my trade. gosh. Absolutely. It's because our mind is prone to see the full picture. Mm -hmm. It's the trauma that it's the, it's the mistakes, the little it's things that some, most of the time have got nothing to do with us. Or like we were so emotional in that moment, we didn't really think it through. Mm -hmm. And that is what hinders us from making the choices that we need to when mm -hmm. it comes to trading. Right. So... Once the women break over that hurdle, oh my gosh, now, to the moon. How does this fit into the rest of everyday life, right? Yeah. Because I know that, you know, once you start breaking into business, entrepreneurship, mm -hmm. finance, trading, the markets, yeah. you start to also measure other aspects of life in that way. Do you feel like it'll make you over analytical in a relationship? Right. Or your decision making, because mm -hmm. when you're starting to utilize technical analysis and yeah. fundamentals, now you start to judge and grade everything else in your life in that capacity. At first, yes. 
But then you know what it actually did? It made me give myself grace. Mm. I think right now I'm, I'm dealing with giving myself too much grace. I give myself grace yeah. just because I, I understand that there's losses that come. Like a lot of times, like I'm trading with six figures. It's a lot of money. Mm, a couple years. I do. Okay. <laughs> money <up there>. yeah. <laughs> you know, a couple years ago, if I lost $20, $30, I'm probably yeah. like my whole day is ruined. So like I give myself so much grace now that it's like, Okay, Tim, no, for real, no, go sit and think about that for a minute, right? Like, I need you to think a little yeah. deeper in it where I'm kind of, like, reversing it. And I'm just like, no, like, let's process that. And I and I love that for women, though. I'd rather women have the ish, this issue of, like, oh, my gosh, I'm giving myself too much grace, especially how the world views us and everything else that we're dealing with versus the opposite. Like, oh, my gosh, I'm being so hard on myself with every little thing that mm -hmm. I do. And believe it or not, a lot of the girls in our community, they're, well, women, I should say, they're older than me. Mm -hmm. Like when I think about our demographic, about a good 45% of them are like 45 plus and up. So when they, 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 you're 45, you are who you are, right. you know? Yeah, so you're no longer in that questioning phase. No, but trading, it, it forces them to because they understand the power of it, right? They understand the power of it and they understand that if I do this, I can get to that next level. But then what happens is they put their whole life on it because they want it so bad. Mm -hmm. A lot of the girls, they want it so bad because they know it's possible, but they don't want to do the work. So a lot of times we'll give girls a checklist and they'll do everything. And the last piece is always journal. I said, well, if you're going to trade, you need to, you need to research yourself like a book. Mm -hmm. The way you're studying your man, you're studying your kids, the project. I need you to do that with yourself in the decision making when you become a trader. They'll do everything else. But yeah. that last piece, that trading piece, they, they can't. It's mm -hmm. hard for them to see that and look at that. But once again, they jump over that hurdle and give themselves, give, your time, give yourself time and grace. And it looks different. Stop comparing, right? For me, it might took six months. Some people take two years. But you have to go through that journey because it's, it's bigger than trading at this yeah. point, you know? What have you learned about, like, when it comes to, let's say, you know, because we talked about off camera, yeah. you know, different business ventures that you want to get into and things that you want to do. Yeah. But now for you, it's running a business, right? Mm -hmm. Because with your platform, this is a business, right? Yeah. Trading is the product, right? The coaching is the product, yeah. but it's the business itself. So now, you know, as a woman, how yeah. has running a business changed you, right? What are some of the things that you've seen as you research yourself and you mm -hmm. reflect upon who you are? How has it changed Tiffany J? Whew. Um, it's made me definitely more disciplined Yeah. because it's not just me anymore, right? It's a company, it's people that depend on a product or whatever else that I'm putting out there. So it's made me... Uh, more disciplined, also a little bit more self-aware of everything. Um, my best to be more considerate um, of others because a lot of times, me, I'm kind of like a firecracker in regards to like, actually not firecracker, I just go. Like, I'm okay to just go. Go, 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 go. Um, but learning that not everyone operates that way, yeah. that's hard for me. Uh, very Sagittarius to me. We're just like, we're just go, 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 go. Like, and we operate that way and we do well that way, but not a lot of people do. And, and that was hard for me to kind of like get and to give grace to, and especially just my upbringing. I feel like a lot of people never gave me grace growing up. So a lot of people. And that's all I've ever wanted was people to give me grace to just figure things out. Mm -hmm. um, and I didn't notice until, you know, I was like 25 that, oh, my gosh, like you, you the same thing that you were running from, like you're doing. So coming into business, I'm very self-aware of that um, because you have you we can't have in a business. You can't just have one mindset to run a business. Like, you just can't. It just doesn't work. Right. Do you think that you maintain your femininity while doing business? Um, I think so. I think I do it 
70-30. Just because of the field that I'm in, I got to turn it up sometimes. You know, it just, yeah. I have to. But I think I do it very well, and I think I do use a lot of, like, my feminine ways to kind of maneuver in my business. You know, I was actually talking about this um, yesterday where I'm, I'm in a lot of rooms with a lot of powerful men, but I don't think no one, a lot of the men look at me as, like, another one of the men at mm -hmm. all yeah. at all like if anything <laughs> the complete opposite um but there's some times where you know i have to really turn it on be more assertive oh yeah oh yeah but i think i love being in this position in money as a woman um having a product that works that people know that works and being able to sit in my feminine ways it, it, it kind of works for me and even when I have to turn up, it's like they, people get it. Yeah. You know? So what do you see in the markets today yeah. that you're paying attention to? And the news is crazy right now, of course. Right? <sighs> it's all over. You know, I was just reading the newspaper where they said that there was an uptick in retail sales. Mm -hmm. Right? And, you know, generally my, my whole thesis on that, of course, early on was that people was saving more money in preparation for emergency during COVID. Mm -hmm. Right. So this particular recession, so called,ly has not hit the way that, you know, the Fed wanted to hit. They want right. people to stop spending, but people are still spending like nothing's happening. Mm -hmm. And if a person don't feel a recession, a recession ain't happening. Right. Mm -hmm. The recession has to be felt. It has to be believed right. before anything changes. Mm -hmm. And it feels like people don't believe it. Right. But I think yeah. partially that you can't have a president that say we're not in a recession and, and the feds want people to act like we're in a recession right. so they can decrease spending to bring down inflation. Because mm -hmm. even with high inflated prices, people are still spending money like it's nothing. Right. So, you know, yeah. but what, what do you see the future of the market being for 2023? Well, just to even touch on the the spending, it's emotional. Mm. That That's all emotional spending. Yeah. We don't got the money to be spending. We all got it, yeah. but COVID, I think a lot of people, I don't think people realize how hard COVID has hit us. And we're going to feel it for the next five to six years when it comes to emotion. So people want to feel good. People want to eat good. People want to look good. They may not travel, they'll, they'll ease on the travel. Why? It's because we couldn't go anywhere. So people are trying to create that own travel right. within their so own homes. and. Yeah, like they're not, we're not trying to do that right now because we may be locked down again. So we're trying to make our home our peace, our home our travel. That's why you can see home decor and all these different things do pretty well as well because people are not trying to. Mm -hmm. um, in regards to 2023, we're in this weird crossroads right now where I don't even know if I can say this, but like I, I think we can, like we're on a brink of a war. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, so I could come here and I could say to you, do defense, do tech, do all these different things. But if we go to a war, it's going to be a whole different ballgame, mm -hmm. right? So I, I, if you asked me this six months ago, I would say, okay, let's keep on energy, right? Keep going with energy, consumer staples, keep on where we're going. Let tech continue cooling, cooling off. But that's not where we're at right now. Where are we at? Right now we're at a place where people need to literally, if you don't have short-term skills, right? Or you're not building for that, you have to research and you have to sit out. Let the, let, let the big kids do the big kids, but you can't because anything can change. If you don't know how to read a chart, if you don't know how to set stop loss, if you don't know how to do certain things, you cannot be in this market right now because things will change, right? In the brink of a minute. All right, y'all, listen, man. So life is all about choices, right? One thing I learned early on was that my life circumstances are direct results of the choices of the things that I put into my head, into my mind, into my personality, right? At the end of the day, wherever you are currently in your station of life, it's on you to take yourself out of that situation to where it is that you want to be. There's certain skill sets that you're gonna need in order to manifest that reality, right? Those skill sets, they can be financial, they can be personal, they can be mental. They can, there's so many different skill sets out there. 
But at the end of the day, you have to better yourself each day, one step at a time. 1% better each day gets you where you want to be. Now, in my life, I was a little bit of a knucklehead, right? I started out, fell, fell down a couple times, had to pick myself back up. But it was through the perseverance of information. That's one thing that I was always blessed with, right? Whether it was the right information or the wrong information sometimes, right? I would pursue it. And more importantly, I would apply it. I would apply that information in whatever way needed for me to excel in my life. Now, the skill sets that I chose to dive into were financial because that's the biggest problem that I always saw in my life at the time. And I'm sure a lot of you guys have the same issues. You want to succeed financially, you want to get from point A to point B, but you either just don't know how, you just don't have anybody to show you the way, or you just don't have a community of people around you to give you anything more than what you already got. So what we're doing here at the BWO, man, is we're taking the knowledge and information that we've obtained over the years and all different types of skill sets, and we're bringing that back to the community. I'm talking stock trading, I'm talking financial literacy, I'm talking crypto, Web3, blockchain, the whole nine. The current institutional money being the financial markets and the stock market, the forex markets, the futures market, everything along those lines, and the future of money, right? We're talking Web3, we're talking DeFi. These are skills, these are words that you need to not only know, understand, but you need to know how to apply to your life in order to take you from where you are to where you need to go. As a culture, it's on us to make sure that this happens. Not just for us, our sake, but also for the next generation. Because had the generation before us done this for us, a lot of us wouldn't be in the situation that we're in right now. So again, guys, man, listen, I can't stress this enough. Make sure y'all take advantage of what we got for you, man, because we are putting together institutional level education, curriculum, community. This isn't even just a community. This is a movement, a movement that you've never seen before and you probably never will see again. So make sure y'all stay tapped in. And a lot of times, People ask me, okay, but Tiff, we're, we're in a recession, right? There's things that you can invest in in a recession. Yeah, right? So we talked about consumer staples, something like McDonald's. I, I talk about all the time, and people are like, McDonald's? I'm like, yeah, you made a lot of money on McDonald's. <sighs> McDonald's. Gotta love McDonald's. It, it, and it's, it was such, it was cause and effect to the same thing that we talked yeah. about. People don't really have money right now, but they, they just want something quick, cheap. Let's go to McDonald's, mm -hmm. right? And you see, the, and, Mar and McDonald's knows that. Why? It's because they're putting all this crazy shit in a burger. Like, I don't know if you looked at their menus. That's how you know a company's doing good, when they're like, oh, I'm going to put surf and turf in a cheeseburger, in a burger, and sell it to you, and it's going to sell out. Like, that's not good. Like, yeah, when, when it... buy anything. But they know that, because they know the market conditions that we're in right now. But when you think about things that are going to do well, it has to be consumer staples. It doesn't matter if we go through a war. People still got to eat, mm -hmm. right? Um, now you got to get a little, you got to get fancy when it comes to st certain things, Costco's, right? People, they're going to buy in bulk. They're going to save. They need, they need their product. That's, that's never going to go away. But besides that, the fence looks different now. People, it's so funny because people think about wars. They're like, oh, we need weapons and all mm -hmm. these different things. I don't know why people think the next war looks like the next big war looks like yeah, Ukraine I don't think it's, and uh, Russia. I don't. Yeah, <laughs> even Ukraine and Russia. That's not even a good war. It's I not. And, and no such thing as a good. I war. know, but but I'm just saying the way they back, they neighbors fighting each other. You understand me? And yeah. Russia is huge, and they can't even deal with Ukraine. No. But you know, there's so much politics around how they have to go about it that they can't just bully a hundred percent the way that they could if they wanted right. to win a war. Plus. Mm -hmm. They want the country to still be standing when they take it over. Exactly. You understand me? So that makes it harder. But, mm -hmm. you know, these economics wars and these artificial intelligence wars and these tech wars. Now, that's where we at right now. Exactly. You understand me? And, and that's being played already in this country. Mm -hmm. Right. Like there's a civil war in this country between old money and new money and techs and politicians mm -hmm. and multitude of different people. And they're just utilizing different ways to fight war. So. And of course, the news is part of the war machine. Right. So depending on whose side they on, they're not going to be reporting on themselves how to utilize in the media in no. this particular war. Mm -hmm. So it's like understanding the information war, the tech war, the media wars, 
all of these these economic wars right. and the way that they're going about you know uh, 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 battling each other and the people are just in the midst of it is key like right. even though the thing with Kyrie was it's an economic war we're gonna put economic sanctions on them until he cooperates in the way that we want him to so yeah. called right yeah so it's like we have to understand the way these people are fighting it's no longer from physical no you understand me like this is a, a and then of course the spiritual wars is going on but mm-hmm. you have to understand that because i think people have to be number one educated and resilient enough to be able to defend themselves as things are going on because the people at the bottom they're going to get affected the most yeah they right are. but they're not even the intended target they're just a byproduct of it yeah you understand me and so trying to raise up the people at the bottom and give them this education so that you can understand what your options are, short-term mm-hmm. skills. Like one of the things we've been teaching a lot is AI skills, right? Yeah. We had a bro where we taught him, my bro, um, showed him how to utilize AI like Mid Journey and Dolly, mm-hmm. where it's like these text to image prompts mm-hmm. where you can create anything just by typing it in. And then show him how to take that, right? Turn that into a canvas and sell art. You can go to flea markets right now and be selling yeah. them and, and be getting, wow. you know, uh, $20 a print, right, for this beautiful art that you're paying for in subscription to create. Yeah. But if you don't know about different ways to monetize different skill sets, and there's so many different ones out I there know. right now, then, number one, you're looking at old models to trying to make money, right, mm-hmm. which are fine, but that should be a part of your, you know, streams of income, not just your only way to, you know, be completely relying on that. Because yeah. everything goes through cycles, mm-hmm. right? And like I've been telling you, I'm super big on just thinking about the cycles of everything right now, right? Yeah. Whether there's our, you know, circadian cycles to our economic cycles, right? And then looking at our societal cycles of where are we now as a people, yeah. right? Like, what is it like if we was to look at Black America as a company and we was to look at what, what is our mo- what is our fundamental strong points? How do we mm-hmm. look at the technical analysis of black America to see as it's going up and down, right? Mm-hmm. When can we bet on black America to have this upswing and we can swing trade on it? Like if we was going to place a bet on, you know, I just to put it out there, like if you was to look at each race of people and be like, all right, who am I going to place my option call on for the future? Mm-hmm. You understand me? Now, we have the greatest spending power, mm-hmm. but do you invest in black America? There's a lot of money that you can scout from black America catching, Mm -hmm. you know, uh, uh, um, as we go through these different cycles. Hip hop is one that people take from all the time. You understand me? They they, they find somebody who's hot. They throw them on the block for a second. Mm -hmm. You know, that song gets a hit. Then boom, they done with you. You Mm -hmm. wasn't a long term trade. Yeah. You understand me? You was a quick short term money. Yeah. Grab. So like people really look at us as a commodity, as a market. Yeah. Right. And they trade on us consistently. Like mm-hmm. the first stock market was the black body market yeah. in America. Yeah. Our our faces on, of us working on plantations were on greenback dollar bills. So when we look at that today, like mm-hmm. us learning finance, us learning that is learning how to actually take control and manage our own stock. Exactly. You understand me? Mm-hmm. What do you so what do you think about that? So. A lot of people, it's so funny because I, I wanted to ask you more so like, what do you define black America? Because mm. I feel like, but you know, to answer your question. I'll answer that after you. Okay. <laughs> um, Shar and I were talking about that earlier, but I just think black people, we need to realize that we need to start operating that way. Once we could turn that on for everyone and even Gen Z, I love Gen Z. We, we, we don't give Gen Z enough credit, um, but if everyone starts to turn that switch on to say, hey, I need to start looking at myself, my family, and everything that I'm doing like a playing field and kind of like strip the emotion and, and what's happening to us and start right. getting into the game, we'll be fine, right? And it has to start with financial literacy because you don't got the number one weapon is money. Absolutely. And if you don't got none, if you don't know how to get it, and if you don't know how to properly distribute it, too, because a lot of people got money sitting and they don't know what to do with it, that's where the problem comes. And that's why people like you, myself, and all the other platforms coming out and pushing this information and not stopping, too, right? That's important. And talking to different demographics are, are important. So let's say if I'm a young girl, 
I like to start with the younger kids. I'm 16, 18. A lot of times the young girls are like, okay, I'm, I'm thinking about going to college, right? What do I want to do? And then I want to get out of school and then work a job. Where we're at right now, as a young girl, you can't think like that. Yeah. You can't. Um, that, that's just, uh, there's too much moving things around you for you to think like that. Yeah. I think that mindset is a scam. It is. If I'm in college right now and I'm 18 and I'm 19, I'm sorry, babe. I'm sorry to break it to you. You can't just think about yourself and what's going to come in the next two years or what you want to come in the next two years. You, ju you just can't. You got to start getting your money together now. Some people be like, I only got, I don't got no money. I got yeah. FAFSA and I got a little, my mama giving me a little hundred dollars. What do you mean? Do you know what you could do? Do you know what $500 could do for you in the stock market? What have you done with $500? I've done a lot of things with $500. Uh, let's just say. Give my me some numbers. Just Give me a, some numbers. Some numbers. Can, can I get some numbers? Give me some numbers. We are high level conversations. We high level conversations. You, okay. you can, you know what I'm saying, flex your intellect. You can flex your pocketbook. You can flex your trades. We just a safe space it's over safe, here. It's a safe place. Yeah. Well, let me tell you guys, I'm I'm not afraid to say my age. I am 27, about to be 28. Um, I started heavy trading with about ten thousand dollars. Really started with five, and then it went from five to seventeen, back down to about six, and then I was like, you know what? I gotta put more. I put another five and then we had about a good 11 grand that I was trading with. And in the course of maybe what, almost three years, we're about to hit $5 million. Mm. Now, how did you get that first 5,000? Tesla. Tesla. Oh, Tessie. Actually, you know what? Not Tesla. We're not going to give Elon and Tesla all that credit. Good mentorship. Okay. <laughs> My mentor, I worked in hospitality um, at you know, at this is like 2017, 2018-ish. Hospitality, my manager at the time, he was a Tesla fanatic. There was only two black people working in luxury hotels at that, at, at my luxury hotel at that time. It was the manager and me, and he hired me. And because there was not so much of us, we just were a buddy-buddy. Like, that was my guy. And he had a Tesla. And he would pull up in front of the hotel with butterfly doors. He had it all back then. And it was just so fly. And he was just like, this is going to be the future. You need to invest in it. And I was just like, well, you know, I got little, I had investments at that time because earlier my mom introduced me, but it wasn't a lot of money. Yeah. And um, at that time, Tesla was maybe around like 50, 60 bucks. It wasn't expensive. Um, and he said, take half of your check. Juan Davis, love you forever. He said, take half your check, do it. And I was like, oh. he was like, Tiff. Do you have, come on. And I did just that. I put half of my check at that time in to Tesla mm -hmm. and I had it in the account sitting. And come on, you, you saw Tesla hit the high of what, almost two grand at one point, just yeah. about. Um, and that, that was my starting, that was mm -hmm. my starting capital. So you, you went from, you took the earned income from the job, which mm -hmm. was about how much from that check? At that time, that was a bigger check too, because I was upselling hotel rooms yeah. and all the things. About two grand. Okay. Yeah, it was a big. It was a bigger check. Yeah. A bigger check. What was Tesla trading about at that time? Sixty. Sixty dollars. Sixty. Yeah, just about. Okay. Okay. Oh, yeah, so yeah, we, yeah, we, yeah. we did good. But I, but see, I, I like the narration of that story of mm -hmm. like literally being at the job. Yeah. Taking a check, getting some financial advice, mm -hmm. right? Um, which still incurs a lot of risk because it could have went either way, Absolutely. right? But having faith in that, you understand me, putting it within the market, letting it sit while still working, mm -hmm. right? Seeing it work, right? And mm -hmm. now having a greater belief in that, now going into education and actually learning how to trade. Exactly. Dealing with the ups and downs of I could have quit after I lost a certain amount of money, but instead I doubled down on that, yeah. which requires a level of emotional resilience. So for me, I look at it, number one, it, how many hours were you working that week? I did 40 hours, so I was like salaried. So right. 40 hours standard. Mm -hmm. So, and, and this is the mindset I want people to get with like jobs that they yeah. have, right? Like the job is a place you learn from, it's a stepping stone, you understand me? It's a place you steal from. You take all of the experience and the knowledge that you have 
from that job. And if you have a dream, then you utilize that to infuse it within that dream. Mm -hmm. But if you're not taking the income from that job and investing in something important into something, you're going to be at that job forever. Yeah. Right. And so you're going to die at that job. Mm -hmm. Right. With hopes and dreams that never will be, that never got lived. So I like mm -hmm. the story of literally, you know, I took my 40 hours a week. I took 20 of those hours, the time that I spent and I put 20 of those hours in the market. Yeah. So that 20 hours that you worked at the job would have never gave compound interest whatsoever. No. Right. Because you would have always been trading time for money. Right. Mm -hmm. And this is the scam of society yeah. that the average person don't realize that, of course, retirement is a scam as well. Mm -hmm. Most of education is a scam. A lot of things around the political process based on the ideology and the belief in it is a scam. But America as a system is capitalism based on business. Right. So if you don't know mm -hmm. business in America, then you are the product. Right. Right. Whether you're the product as a worker or the product as a student. Right. Or the product as a, a person in jail from committing a crime that are against the rules and regulations of the United States of America as a corporation. Right. So I find it imperative that we have this knowledge just of understanding reality. Yeah. Right. And so like understanding a stock market, right, is understanding the reality of America at the same time. You got to look at America as a company because that's mm -hmm. exactly what it is. Mm -hmm. Right. And this company is ruled by presidents. Mm -hmm. Right. But most people don't look at it from that capacity. Right. They look at the government like their savior, literally. Like if I get in trouble, the government go save me. I know. We know they don't work with politicians. We know they don't work with cops. Right. And I don't think I think that the bigger, the greatest crime is believing that someone is going to save you whose job is not to save you. Right. Right. And so Ooh. learning how to save ourselves is the greatest thing that we can do today. Right. And it starts with stocks. It's yeah, well, that starts will, with knowledge yourself. Knowledge say. yourself and stocks. But the number till this day, since 1950s, this is facts. You guys can Google it. Mm -hmm. The number one way to build wealth around the world. Do you know what that is? Real estate and stock. Stocks. Then real estate. It's it's always been stocks, but they can't they can't tell a, a, a they can't tell a little 19 year old black girl. That $500, that FAFSA check, you going to Miami, doing all these different things, that could change your life in the next four years. They can't do that because we can all do that. And when I tell people that, they always like, nah, it's it. Uh. But then when I show it to them, they're like, oh, wow. But then the problem is, though, but then they're like, can you do it for me? Right. People want automation. Babe, I can't do it for you. You got to do it yourself. And they hate that. Ah. Why can't you believe in yourself? I always tell people, I don't look at myself as much. And people are like, Tiff, don't say that. No, I'm dead serious. I'm, I'm dead serious. Like, what I've been able to do, anyone can do it. Because I know how little, I know, I know how little it actually took when it came to just like, what I, we all have. We've all probably had $500 before in our lives, right? Now, the emotional intelligence part, that's a little different now. But... That starting piece, it, it doesn't take much. We talked about the McDonald's trade, right? For people that don't know the McDonald's trade, a lot of money was made Let me get very some quickly. Numbers. What's up numbers? with these numbers? You want some numbers? How about, let's talk about something that people don't realize. Let's talk about Adidas and Kanye really quick. You talk about Adidas and, and Kanye? Kanye? Let's talk All about right. Adidas and Kanye. Adidas wasn't hot before Kanye came. Yeah, that's a fact. We won't ever go too deep. All I'm going to say is this, and you guys do your own research. Adidas wasn't hot until Kanye came. Mm -hmm. Kanye joined. Two years later, 2015, Adidas said, oh, bet. Oh, this black man is going to make us some money. I'm going to pour it into this black man. And that's what they did. They got distros. They did all these different things in 2015. I want you guys to go look at Adidas stock from 2015 to 2021, right, literally after the whole sp like spike after COVID, and look at that stock. Black a black man did that. That black man made billionaires' money off of. And, but where the we know that everyone know that. I can't. My little eight year old needs to tell you oh, it wasn't hot until we started messing with Yeezys. Yeah. That's all it. That is all it took. Yeah. That that is all it took that could have changed so much black lives. It's Kanye, right? Makeup. I always talk about Ulta. 
One of my best trades I've ever taken to my in my life was this Ulta trade um, in 2020. This was on Clubhouse days. We were arguing on Clubhouse with these white financial advisors, these guys, like, who is this little black girl? Why is she in these rooms with me? Who is this girl? Get her off the stage. Kick her off. It was earnings time. For people that don't know what earnings is, it's a report card for your favorite companies, letting us know what they're doing with our money, how things going, what they plan on doing, all, all the jazz. And in COVID, they're like, the girls are not wearing makeup. Short it. Short Ulta. And I, I was like, oh, really? You're going to short Ulta. So White Wall Street, these men said, the girls, no one has time to buy makeup. They have too many stores. Ulta has too many stores. Real estate, they're, they're built. It's, go, it's going to offset everything. They're not going to make any money. That stock is going to fall. And I said, oh, I know something that Wall, that Wall Street doesn't know. They don't know that YouTube, TikTok, Instagram, these makeup girls is a trillion dollar industry and more than ever. During COVID had me doing new makeup things that I never done before. Mm -hmm. Buying new makeup things that I didn't even know I needed because I have more time than ever. And again, yeah. we want to feel good. Mm -hmm. Every girl knew that. Every girl, it, a lot of girls. That's something that we knew as women. I bet on that stock, I think I put like, a thousand or something. I ended up making like thirteen thousand dollars overnight. Yeah. And the next morning, I was like, "Oh, who wants to start a clubhouse chat? Come on, White Wall Street. Come on, let's have a conversation. And let me educate you about these Gen Z girls and when it comes to makeup and that culture." So there's there's so much around. These is young girls. Oh, the girl, the girls know. The girls know. And this is what I try to put out to women, girls all the time. You don't need me to. You don't need me to do that for you. Invest a couple months in time to learn the structure. It's like driving, right? A lot of people got licenses and they don't got no car, especially in New York. But when it's time for you to get in that car, you need to be able to drive. I always talk about AMC, even that whole spike. The media demonized it so much because they're like, oh, and even us in the culture, we demonized it because we said, yeah, no. we did. And Right, somewhat rightfully so. Why? It's because people were, they didn't know and they just started throwing mm -hmm. money in it. But what if you had that license? What if you had that license and you had the skill? What if you knew how to buy something and to sell it? You, you just, you knew how to read a chart. You knew what these reversal candles meant. Do you know that your life would have been changed forever? Mm-hmm. So, it, and, but we demonize it. Oh my God, people are getting in the, they're just dropping their money in here. No, I remember, I'll never forget this. It was 21 Savage and his manager. After that happened, they were like, yo, Tiff, we want to learn. We were, what, what's going on? And we had a clubhouse. It was probably like 6,000 people in there. We, this is before we even, before Modern Black Girl was really a thing, before it was even a brand. And we taught. So it was just black bodies in that clubhouse chat. We didn't have no slides. We didn't have no website. We had nothing. It was literally like, okay, so you're going to listen. So the S&P 500 and you're listening. There's no recording. This means you're getting back. You're writing on a piece of paper. You're, it was a beautiful moment. And what happens after, you just saw white. It's so funny. You just saw white clubhouse demonizing the whole thing. It was, it was the craziest mm -hmm. thing. And the media, CNBC, and it's just like, no, guys, I promise you this is going to happen again. And what BB, Bed Bath & Beyond, it happened again. Mm -hmm. But did we know what to do? We didn't know what to mm -hmm. do. And the thing is, you have to have, this is, a, this is what I'm saying. Like, every young girl, every young guy could have took these trades. That's a because fact. white America, they did. But on, on CNBC, they can't tell you that. They can't tell you no, that we did that. Big. The corporations won, the institutions oh rather won the most. But of course they do that because, especially for Black America, it's so yeah. dangerous because of our spending power. Yeah. That if you educate our spending power, it becomes the most powerful in the nation. Quick, too. And 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 now <laughs> that's too much. Like then we can become market makers based on what we influence and what we want. Right. Right. Like what Kanye did with Adidas. Right. Is you got to understand. You know, if he's able to make Adidas one to two billion dollars a year, right? How much is Kanye West worth? Right, because we look at evaluations mm -hmm. all wrong. I yeah. was having a conversation with my bro Loon about this, is that even artists, the way they sell their masters, right? Mm -hmm. you, you don't think long term enough to understand how to leverage and they haven't created vehicles so that people can leverage their own IP rightfully. 
right. right? Because the deal, people want to do the deals with them. They got to sell it to somebody else and somebody else does a deal with them, mm -hmm. right? So therefore, they, they make sure that you're not in that deal structure to where you can get the most off your own intellectual property and your own value. Right. Everybody else values off us more than we do. Mm -hmm. So if the idea of Kanye West going to Adidas, right, and, and, and making them billions and billions of dollars, then that means Kanye West must be worth billions and billions of dollars. Yeah. Just because his partnership ends with Adidas doesn't mean that his value disappears, mm -hmm. right? Because it was always based on an evaluation based on a partnership. Right. But he made Adidas more money than they ever made him. You understand me? Yeah. So that means that he must be more valuable than Adidas. But we don't mm -hmm. think about it like that. Right. Right. So therefore, when we see, oh, he lost $2 billion, no, what he's saying is that he lost two billion dollar valuation based on the partnership. Right. But how much? Nobody's talking about how much Adidas lost, right? So, if, if you if you then carry mm -hmm. that conversation and be like, oh, Adidas lost twenty billion from long term revenue that they would have gotten. Kanye West lost two billion because Kanye West was the sole driving force mm -hmm. of Adidas. Mm -hmm. Now you look at it and say, damn, this man had all the value. What yeah. can he do next? So now mm -hmm. there's a large consumer base just waiting for him to drop anything and he can make as much money as he wants to, mm -hmm. right? Now, it will require him to utilize new tools today and do things completely different to where right. he can have a model that goes direct to consumer, mm -hmm. right? And then build something on the back end. But we just don't understand, number one, we are not updated with technology. Mm -hmm. We, you know, they keep us out of capital so we don't get funding for projects. Sure don't. You understand me? Black women are the most underfunded than black men, of course, and that's still mm -hmm. only like 1% to 2%. Yeah. And so, like, even the battle between black women and black men is like we're still at the bottom of, yeah. like, let's say black men maybe get a percentage point more than black women. Yeah. Right? But it's like what we're talking about really ain't between the man and woman. It's black people are mm -hmm. not getting funded. Yeah. But they separate us and say, well, black women getting even less than the black. Well, we're getting even less than everybody else. Yeah. So but we it, it, it's you can easily control the people when you divide. them, mm -hmm. Right. And that's why I don't like this battle of a sexist thing. And that's why when black women make money, mm -hmm. it is great to champion them. But it is not at the behest of black men. Right. But we yeah. kind of weaponize it to be like, yo, we making money and y'all not. Ah, ha. You understand me? It's getting better. It, it, yeah, let me just see. It's, you know, I don't you know count what? the eggs until they start. No, no, no. It's today, getting today better. Start flying. It's getting better. And I, I, I got to like say myself, that. But I don't think it's, it's self-correcting. Peace, family. The block represents the blockchain. It's new technology that allows us to create a completely new world, to upend the existing systems and create our own structures. Our parents had that opportunity, our grandparents didn't have that opportunity. No other generation had that opportunity since the Constitution was created, since the banking system was created, since the education and the media systems was created. But our generation have that opportunity that if we learn and we educate ourselves, we can create the world that best fits us in our image, to where you can take the bottom and you can rise them to the top. Then the world is a representation of your knowledge, your ideas, the things that you know, those concepts that define your belief system, how you see, perceive, live, sense, and feel about the world. And order is the first law of the universe because nothing can be done without order. We want to help you get the knowledge, get the technology, and get the community within your life so that you can have a foundation to be able to build on so that your family has a last name that is worth something. I'm 19 Keys. Make sure y'all tap into the block world order. You know what? I think for the last two to three years, we did see this battle and it affected me a lot. It did because I'm someone that grew up idolizing black love. Oh my gosh. I, I'm mm. such a rom-com. I'm a rom Oh, I don't know about basketball. Come on, man. I'm a Love Jones girl. Why do I love basketball? Uh, so disrespectful. I know, sorry. But I, I'm, I'm a Love Jones. Like, I love watching black love movies. Like, till this day. Like, I'm, that's, that's what I grew up on. And so to see what, what was shown and 20 years later, what's happening, that right. broke my heart. Just yeah. to see it. Um, but I think it broke a lot of people's hearts. And slowly, 
I'm seeing the conversation shift. It's not glo global because you got people that want clicks, but the clicks are, I, I'm watching, trust me. They're, they're getting lower. So people that want to attack black women, all of us, they're getting lower. Or they want to attack the union, the union of black, they're getting lower. We're, we're tired, right? And we're seeing it. And there's a lot more, there's, we don't talk about this, but there's a spike of black and brown people getting married right now, especially amongst millennials. Mm. The numbers are there. Mm. People, it's happening. It's the Wakanda movement. Keys, come on, <laughs> come on, Keys. But no, it, it. I think we just got tired. I see I, how Shuri looked at Namor. I see how that, that's what's going on in the courtyard, huh? They trying to find a Namor right now. No, no, Killmonger no. ain't there. T'Challa ain't there. And Mbaku somewhere, you know, beating his chest. I ain't seen him with a queen yet. You know, I ain't see the movie. Uh, I ain't see the new that's, one yet. That's not giving away the plot. Well, you know, gonna... we know there ain't no <laughs> black male superheroes in there, so that's the plot. But... Oh, my goodness. I'm just no, saying. But I say all this to I say. like the movie. It was an amazing movie, first yeah. of all. Let me say that. Okay. But I also think that it's irresponsible in, for anybody to make a movie at the height of where we are at, this, where black family dynamic mm -hmm. is not at a, at a high, and you're creating a movie that's to inspire black America, you have to show black family. That's true. But at the same time, one movie can't solve it all. No. It can't. See, this is, see, see, Spike Lee got in trouble when he made that Malcolm X movie because it was so powerful. Yeah. Right? It, 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 sometimes one movie is a great lesson that can show us what's possible. And it can be yeah. enough to inspire a generation, right. right, that now has a vision of what's possible. But they understand how powerful media is. Mm -hmm. That's why they work very hard to control. So, mm -hmm. like, Every other group makes sure that they embed their messages in media because right. every group has an agenda. Well, we want things to be seen this way. We want it to be seen this way. Make sure you put this type of scene in there. Mm -hmm. Like this is not even from the director's vision. It's from whoever has control over yeah. saying that make sure this agenda is in there. Only black America don't take these things serious enough. It's never entertainment, right? Yeah. It's always subconscious. Mm -hmm. So like if we literally had control over that, then those same issues of us not seeing black family, then you start to see black family decrease. Mm -hmm. These are correlations, right. right? There are no black family movies out there, period. So one no, movie could not. change it. Because yeah. we got we getting more slave movies. We still not getting no black family movies. So they're either going to try to inspire black women with the grace of beautiful independence to be strong and, and, and create a reality that where you don't need your black man whatsoever. Right. Mm -hmm. We're going to see more movies like that or mixed race movies. Well, how about you get you a little white king? You understand me? <laughs> and, 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 and do it like I this. I don't know, is, Keith. I can't let you say that. This is reality. Have no. you show? Can you show me in any advertisement yeah. throughout the world that you walk around and you see where there's mm -hmm. black men and black women and black children? When you go through the airport mm -hmm. when you go travel and you go look at these billboards, it's all mixed family. That is Subconsciously, true. Subconsciously, it is a program into how they want the future to be. Yes. But there is, I, I just don't want to discredit some of like the writers and directors that are trying to push that. Because there I'm are not, shows not, that are... But that's what I'm saying. It's yeah. not about... It, like there, There's a you battle know? even between them. It's like, yeah. you got Ryan Coogler. Mm -hmm. He's a black man from Oakland. Right? So yeah. it's the vision that he would have as a black man from Oakland. Yeah. Then it's presidents and everybody else that's saying, well, we need this character. Well, we need this put in this scene. Yeah. So there's not, it's not Ryan Coogler I'm talking about or yeah. some of these. They, they are happy to be in positions to at least get some of our vision told in a yeah. way that we would be inspired by it. Yeah. And then you have other people who understand the psyche of black America and how powerful that is. Mm -hmm. And they say, well, you is not about to make a black movie without some of our agenda in there too. But this is where economics comes in because that's why we need more money going to the directors and these inspiring directors and writers. You know how much writers there are black? There's so much that just, they don't get the funding. They don't get the proper equipment. They don't get anything well, to I mean, really produce the way. we got Tyler Perry. He got the biggest production studio. So yeah. it's not, an, it's, see, see, this is what we realize. It's not yeah. even just about the money. It's about the mind and the spirit of the people who got the money. Right. You understand me? Because we have enough money, but people are not willing to put it in that direction. So yeah. we need to, you asked me about black America earlier. Yes. 
you know, black is not an actual race, but this is how we describe this feeling of what our race is, right? right? By this color code, right? Mm -hmm. And, you know, I always was taught that black is like the essence of color, right? It's, it's, it's original, right? That's where everything comes from. So I look mm -hmm. at black as a mindset, right. right? Because it's not a race, right? Now, in America, black America, we are Americans because we are on North American soil, right? Not mm -hmm. United States of America as a corporation, which is completely different, but Native Americans were dark, melanated people, same sure color was. as you and I. Yeah. Right. And a lot of those people from, you know, earlier times, some come over from Africa, some was already here. Mm -hmm. Like there's historical proof and record of this reality. Right. So a lot of us are, especially after being here for hundreds of years, you're Americans. Right. Mm -hmm. Now, black America is comprised of this think tank of different ethnicities. Mm -hmm. Right. So you can be black, but ethnically we can have two different backgrounds. Right. Because ethnicity is based on race, values, geographical location, yeah. language, faith, beliefs. So mm -hmm. black America is this melting pot of different ethnicities. Right. Now, my thesis upon black America is the way that we're controlled is that we only prop up certain ethnic backgrounds in our culture. So yes. when they talk about diversity and inclusion, they're not mm -hmm. talking about everybody. They only want to find people who have the same ethnic background that's in a line with them. Mm -hmm. Then we can say, well, our diversity numbers are up. Right. But somebody that's like 19 Keys, like, come on now. Well, that's not what we were talking about when we talk diversity. Mm -mm. You don't want black Muslim men like that, that believe in like, you know, traditional things. Like, or even Caribbean. And Caribbean. That's not what we're talking about when we mm -hmm. talk diversity. No, not So at all. you have to understand the trick bag of generalizing things as well. Right. But then just the general concept of black America is, you know, should more so be first is African descendants of slaves, right? right. Like the ADOs, people who actually built the country and people who are native to the country is the first level of black America. Mm -hmm. Then there's immigrants that come to this country that add to the culture of this country and the numbers of black people in America. Right. Right. And then, you know, it's other people that uh, may just consider themselves black and then there's people who don't consider themselves black right right because some people that look black ain't black right because if you are not ethnically right african ethnically an original man or woman in your mm -hmm. thinking in your spirit then you're not included in the number when i think about black america you're not in that intellectual think tank mm -hmm. right and we see this played out in society we know it's a lot of people that have the same Skin color, we won't invite to the barbecue. Right. Conversation won't be good. Right. Politics won't be good. Yeah. Spirituality won't be good. Right. right. And so my question to pose is like, when we look at black media specifically, mm -hmm. is it ran by black America? No. Exactly. Yeah. So that means God, that no. we don't control our images. We don't control our narrative. No. We know that hip hop is not ran by black America. We don't control our sound. We no. don't own our sound, no. right? The food industry is not controlled by black America. We mm -hmm. don't own our food. We don't grow our food. We don't control our food. The education system. So it would behoove me to be for and, and, and assimilate to society because none of it is owned by me, somebody who look like me or think like me. Right. So that would mean that I am in this constant fight for representation. Right. and ownership and control of my own narrative, mm -hmm. genius, thesis, ideas, and projection of ourselves on screen. Right. And the beautiful thing is social media, when, think about the first, like, I always, I say social media really hit its, like, weird peak, because I, I think we're still in our peak, honestly. 2010 to, like, where we are now. So think about Twitter mm -hmm. and when Instagram just first came came out like even before like the myspace myspace was cute but it really started when twitter when we really started to have conversations i remember being being a millennial is great because we get a little bit of yeah, best both. of both worlds right um really spending nights and nights and nights on twitter like not going to sleep because i'm on twitter having conversations because it's conversations there's no imagery at that time at that moment was when we were able to really start to control our narratives and really put things into place. But we had our issues, we have our things, which, whatever. We yeah, can't talk about the past. Dysfunctional family on Twitter. We got all <laughs> the things, man. But 
there is another opportunity right now for us to do something about it, right? Why? It's because we know how to get to the bag now. It's not a secret. We know our power. We know how the world views us, but we also know how to maneuver. It just takes proper leadership and proper support to believe in leadership to get us to that next level because we can do it. Yeah, it, it's very much so possible because again, you you have we have all the pillars. It's just for us to really now come together and do that. And this is why I want more black and brown people to have money because at the end of the day, like you're gonna build a system and then we're human. Someone's gonna fuck it up, but then we need more money to build it again. It's, I hate when it's not fair when. There's one black network and it fails and now all black people are a failure. All yeah, black that's television. Whack. That's why we see Sam Beg Friedman and that's no indication on how white men handle finances. Oh, talk about it. I'm just saying. Like it's know? not. Like people are not gonna be like, well, it's gonna it's gonna slow down the when it comes to crypto, it's gonna slow it down yeah. for a couple years. But it's not, not going to change the face of. It's not. Oh my God! There are so many white men and women yeah. that mishandle money and create billion-dollar scams in history, but they never yeah. will come to face of it. Yes, but but the and the Let thing that have is, been a black man. Oh, oh my God! God damn! We got to stop looking at black people as singular people. We yeah. are so different. The Negroes don't even be at the barbecue that be messing up stuff in the Listen, first place. I don't go to barbecues. We do cookouts over here. Yeah, if we not benefiting, then we definitely <laughs> not. If we not a part seriously. of the salute, like if we don't benefit from it, how yeah. do we even get categorized as part of the problem in the first place? Yeah. And just, it, it's, it's all a mindset thing. And, you know, we come from two different backgrounds, right? I could do something great. You could do something great. I could do something really terrible. You could do something really terrible. That don't mean the next person coming up can't be look at our case studies. Because a person like me, I always think about modern black girl. Modern black girl, in the two years, we've done great work. But if I wanted to be the number one brand on this planet, I could have. I could have, easy. But what do you want? Right? What, what is the goal? Do you want to just be the number one? Or do you want long term? Right? Do you want to build other modern black girls up or do you want to build yourself up and you're what is the goal how do you do it properly there's there's people there in place right and a lot of times sometimes I feel like we get a little money and we stop looking and I think that's what happened to a lot of our leaders they get some money and they feel like the money makes them worthy mm -hmm. or intelligent and like they know it all when in hindsight nah babe you gotta sit back well, and you man, need to pay most attention of these fools, they just they just rich idiots <laughs> they don't know nothing besides they one don't. little skit. This, this is, you know, everybody know me, man. You know, I'm, I'm going to say what I'm going to say. I'm going to be who I'm going to be. You know, it, it, it is very few yeah. black men that actually have, that, that are influencers today. Mm -hmm. They make, and I'm not going to name particular industries. I don't want nobody yeah. to feel a certain way, but they yeah. can feel however they feel. You mm -hmm. understand me? Because I'm still big keys. But the reality of it is, is that, mm -hmm. You know, men get jealous of each other when they know another man has capabilities that they don't have and they can't compete with, mm. right? And that jealousy is the factor of, I wish I had that. I don't want him to have it. Right. You want to replace this person. Right. So it's literally wanting to be that person and not wanting that person to be themselves, right? And it's the unfortunate reality because I was taught about Black God Protocol by my brother, Dr. Wesley, which is his idea about mm -hmm. that we all have different frequencies, yeah. right? Just like different spectrums of light, but we all add, right, to the full spectrum of color in the universe. Right. And so if we bow down to each other gracefully upon the things that you can do that I can't do, we mm -hmm. never hear but each other. There's never no issue. There's never right. no problem. Mm -hmm. But we get to this point where we start doing compare analysis upon each other, and we can't be happy with our gifts and our skills, right? And so I don't have any expectation on some of these brothers or sisters to be high intellectual leaders. Sometimes mm -hmm. Nathan will just play their role, yes. right? Because otherwise you're going to try to play a role that you can't compete with. Now you're jealous of the person that's doing their job better mm -hmm. when it was never something that manifested in you in the first place. So you can never try to do a good thing from a jealous or envious right mm -hmm. uh, 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 or bad intentful place it's never going to work the foundation of everything matters the most because right. that's the integrity that it stands on 
And so what we lack is proper foundation and integrity. First thing that everybody needs, like I said, is knowledge of self, right? Not knowledge of the world, not knowledge even of the markets first. You have to know thyself. Right. That's going to help you in the markets. That's true. If you know yourself very clear, like one thing in my coaching sessions I teach the students is about like understanding your human design. You need to, I, I, we even teach them everything to life path numbers, to personality types, to write your, your type of uh, intelligence. Are you a deductive reasoner, abductive? Like I need you to have a complete foul on yourself yeah. to where you can know every aspect like the CIA and the FBI put it together and handed it to you. Mm -hmm. You understand me? Now you are able to draw from this understanding of why you do things, yeah. right? Understanding the why is the key component in understanding yourself. We don't do things on an operation of autonomous just for randomized order. Mm -hmm. There's always a, a uh, beginning stage of how we became the way we are. And oftentimes we have to take a look at our childhood, which was our most you know, uh, prudent time of programming where we couldn't think for ourselves and we have to absorb all of the experiences, knowledge, influence around us. Right. So this dictates who we become. Mm -hmm. And then we fight not to change that person because we protect what we are, not wanting to become more sometimes. So people fight against change, whether it's good or bad, because they think they protecting themselves. Yeah. Right. Instead, you have to allow yourself to grow. Mm -hmm. right? You have to allow yourself to evolve. And this is the thesis that I try to get people to understanding that. You know, your old self is a place that you can always graduate from. Absolutely. Right? You don't protect that grade level. Mm -hmm. Right? You go from 12, then you go to college, then you get your master's degree, and then it's a lifelong education process. There's nobody you, I don't believe in reaching your peak. Mm. You understand me? I believe that you reach a point where you start to limit yourself based on realistic thinking. Right. That I've done enough and I can't go any further. But I don't believe in peaks. The universe mm. is continuing to advance in an infinite ways where light is reaching places and the human being, you know, it, it was saying that our knowledge is like a ladle in the ocean and a ladle is like a small little spoon. If you was to pull a little bit of that from the ocean, that's about our knowledge. But the ocean right. of knowledge out there that exists is infinite. True. Right. True. So like with finances, mm -hmm. this is really for me, like it's really super key. And I, I, I get in trouble with you know, the uh, political organizers and activists about this, because I truly yeah. think that economics is the most important, economics and education is the most important things to focus on, mm -hmm. right? And we've tried all those other things a lot. We did. We've put them, we've plastered them on media, we've spent millions of dollars in budget, hundreds of millions of dollars in budget to mm -hmm. see if that works. But yeah. the aggregate efficiency is very low. Right. Mm -hmm. The outcome of it has always been low. Yeah. So I'm an effective thinker. How mm -hmm. can we do the best thing? Right. Not the thing that's even working, but where is, is there a better way to do it? Mm -hmm. And so everybody knows that, but their checks are connected to the way that they're currently working. Right. So they can't switch over a business model because mm -hmm. then their lifestyle is in jeopardy. Right. So the persons that's supposed to be fighting for black America is compromised based on their financial situation. Mm -hmm. So they can't teach you finance because it's not, you know, financially uh, uh, profitable for them. So it, yeah. that's the danger of us being reliant, right, on an old system which doesn't allow us to create our own. It's all, it, I, when you were talking, one word that just came to my mind, actually two, scarcity mindset. Mm -hmm. that, that, that's all that it is from ourselves with others, with everything. Yeah, hey, listen, y'all, I'm so excited. I, you know, I'm gonna be honest with you, I done had this product for a while, right? We already had Smart Moss, but we start adding gold powder to it, right? So, like, now before interviews, I really, I've been popping these Smart Moss golds, and it gives me, like, this very calm, but focused energy where I can feel myself, like, thinking, I can feel my brain tingling up there, you understand me? And I'm gonna be honest, I've been taking the gold water, I take that faithfully. Right, but what I learned to do now is I take the Smart Moss Golds, has the lion's mane in there, right, and it got that gold powder and of course the sea moss and everything. But it's gonna hit you with a nice charge in your brain, and increase that memory focus. It's a nice nootropic, right? So if if if, if you about to do some strenuous psychic activity, right, 
utilize the mental energy, you want to be on that smart mouse goal. This is the reason that I'll be able to articulate the way that I do because my brain processing speed never slows down when I'm tapped into the smart mouse goal. So you got to pop a couple rounds before you go. Like I'm heavy on this. Everybody know gold water, but gold water is a corporation. It's not one product. It is a bunch of different products that we have that are mineralizing and adding in nutrients adding in vitamins, adding in nootropics that your body actually needs to perform at a high level. So if you're looking for high, high level mental performance, go for that Smart Moss Gold. And wash it down with some of this gold water, some of that colloidal gold water, man. I've been taking this for a while, but honestly, I've been sleeping on Smart Moss Gold, but now I'm wide awake, and you can too. If you want that extra mental boost in performance, listen, it's an ad, but I ain't, I ain't playing like I'm dead serious. I'm a live serious corrective language smart moss gold make sure you go to www.goldwater.com every bottle of smart moss gold goes in support of helping our high level goals here at high level conversations healthy production peace man. and if we can work on that for ourselves and 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 share that right we share christmas gifts birthday gifts all of that but share knowledge Right. We can get to that next step. Now let me ask you something. Just a little switch up. Okay. Because I seen you, you you posted something, and uh -oh. you were saying that um, you know, it was about romance and finance, <laughs> and, and you was essentially saying that you're a woman that got money, right? You have yeah. you have all you have, but if the right king, the right king of the moon that came around, uh. you understand me? The right king of Wakanda came around, right? Then you would drop some of what you're doing to help and assist, right? Your king. Yeah. You believe that? Because a lot of women don't believe in that. Yeah, I'm a, um, I believe in love and union. I do. I do. Like, I'm a sucker for love and union and seeing healthy union together. And I didn't grow up with a lot of that. Actually, none of that. But I seeked it a lot. And I, and I, and I, I know what it looks like, even though I didn't see it in my home because I seeked it, I know what it looks like. And I know my positioning and I know what a man's positioning, but I also know how two unions can create your own positioning. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's the most beautiful thing ever. Yeah. Um, I, I always say that you can look at a couple like a, a love, a love, uh, uh, well, on the outside, you can see love there and you can see that happiness and joy. And it's so beautiful with little that they may have. Yeah. And you can see someone, they have all the jewels, all the different things and they're miserable. Like you think yeah. you have all the money in the world. I always tell people with me, um, when I hit a million dollars, the first a million dollars, mm -hmm. talk to the numbers. <laughs> I, um, I almost like, Ambulance had to come to my house mm, of a panic attack that I had. <laughs> I could just imagine. <laughs> Please. It's not funny. Please. It's not funny. It's not. No. <laughs> listen, I only because I just imagine like, Lord. Oh. No, <laughs> like lost my Christian mind. Like going crazy. Like, no, oh it wasn't God. even like, you know the what funny thing is. this in my account? Oh, my God. No, no, <laughs> it, it wasn't even that because it was just one of those things. The funny thing is I the community took the trade with me. It was in yeah. September. The, the community, we all took the same trade. Well, y'all was making money. Yeah. And, and I was about. like, I was like, guys, y'all, I'm officially the first millionaire in my family. Mm. And like the girls were like, oh my God. They were freaking out. It was a whole thing. Nobody hit me up about this trade, by the way. It's okay. We didn't know each other back then. I we was know on Clubhouse too. Everybody know I was Clubhouse. I know, cousin. but we. I was the Tupac. Malcolm X a clubhouse. <laughs> I heard done. people in there talking. I was, what is y'all talking about in here? Uh, it became legend. Everybody knew Key. Nobody hit me up about these trades. Uh, it's okay. We, we, hear <laughs> we hear now. But no, I, I like literally like I panicked because I was just like at that time I had a list. So I'm really big on manifestation and like my whole life that I wanted that I manifested I was living. Yeah. So like I, I manifested two ways. Like I would do manifestation meditation like every other day. But then I also created an Instagram. So I have an Instagram page that's locked. It's me. It's my nickname for myself. And it's a manifestation page. Mm, I like that. It's 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 modern day manifestation. All right. Go use yeah. the Instagram. I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna do that. It's fire. It's better because you can I'm like gonna charge people if they want to see it though. No, it's, it's not. It's a thousand dollars per viewer. 
But that's part of my manifestation. It's going to help me with one of my goals. <laughs> But no, I, I did that and I put all these things on it. I put the apartment, I put the car, I put everything that I said would make me happy mm -hmm. on it. And then I got it. Mm. I was heartbroken because now I'm like, what the cause next? You didn't put the man on there, did you? There was a man at the time. Yeah, the, okay. There was a man. Was, was, yeah. Who did you use as your inspiration? No, no. They're, 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 keys, come on. Focus. Go. I am focused. I'm no, getting details. No, 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 no. <laughs> we can't talk about that. But there, there was a guy. I, I had it all. And there was okay. definitely men. There was intimacy. There was body stuff. It was, everything was there. And I was miserable. Mm. I was so unhappy. And I was just like, what's, like, I just, it made me think about death. It made me think about, like, damn, like, I just, I had no one to really talk to fully about that or that I felt safe to talk to about that. Those people I talked to, but I didn't feel safe. And in that moment, it made me realize, okay, what's really important to you? Yeah. Because you thought the car was, okay, you got the car, the house, this, this, the status, all that, you got it. But what's really important to you? Love was number one on that list mm. to me, just because of like who I am as a person. Like I love... I love, I'm gonna say I love love, but I love connecting. I love little moments. I love intimacy. If the right man comes into my life that I feel like, okay, you can come into this, that. Mm -hmm. That's a big position to be like, oh, you, like, think about it. Like, that's 19th's girl. I oh, know, it's a big thing. That's his girl, like, and the whole world sees it. I'm sorry, like I, I, I love love so much that I want to guard that like a baby, right? Like my newborn baby, like yeah. I ain't trying to, unless the union is strong, you know, the kids got to grow up a little bit and then you can show your baby to the world. Like that's relationships. Well, let me ask you though, how much money he got to have? He's, it's not about money to me. So it's he not can about, be broke? It's not, no, 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 no. You got to have, a, what do you love to do? Right. So and what you love to do has to has to provide some form of funds. I like, mean, well, let's say, you know, he, he likes an to artist. skate. He loves to He's skate. Skateboarder. You better be the best skateboarder. <laughs> Why yeah. you got to be the best? Because you love it. I love what I do. And uh, I'm one of the best. You at know, it. some people, they, they, they reach a, mm -hmm. a, a ceiling at being great at certain things. And maybe he's the best mediocre skater. But you just fell in love with the person. You just like the personality. Cool person. It's just, it a, just vibes. But you know what? But he I'm makes $30,000 a year. But I'm the cheat code, though. Dating a girl like me is a cheat code because oh, so I know how to. You'll get them to invest that money. We gonna, yeah. I'm the money. Okay. Money will never be an issue with me. Okay. I, so, I'm actually getting your spin on this. I'm liking this. So you like, saying that the brother come in. Okay, his finances is not at peak. You understand no. me? But he's making a little thirty thousand dollars a year. Let's say twenty nine thousand nine hundred nineteen dollars per year at the taxes. Now, yes. let's say that out of that, right? Because y'all can't live together <laughs> because he can't pay the rent or even have the rent, yeah. right, with his income. So y'all yeah. would have to live separately, and you would have to actually help him get his finances up to a level where he can actually chip in into the relationship. But I need to under no hold on though no, because I need to understand because uh, are is he taking care of himself? He's taking on care that of him salary? on that salary. He doesn't need much, you know. Little okay. skinny guy, he don't even eat that much. No, no, keys. Come on. He fasts so, on Sundays. Listen, if no Chick Fil A, nothing that. If under whatever salary that this man is, he has. If he's living comfortable, and I like his comfortable, because again, everybody's comfortable is different. I don't have to like your comfortable, right? Mm -hmm. But I like your comfortable, and your comfortable makes me comfortable, but I know there's ways that I can elevate that. I'm okay with that. You understand? Yeah, so you gonna repaint the apartment, get the new car, all if that he's stuff. Okay, if, if he's okay. No, because I'm not. Again, it, it's what is our union? Like, what is, is that okay with you? Are you it's really you what we define. being an elevator. Um, could be elevate in different ways. Money's not the only way of elevation. It's so funny. I had an argument with a guy recently about this where he felt like the only way, and I felt so, I was like, give me a hug. I was like, give me a hug. Cause I was like, let me hug you for a second. Because he literally felt like the only way he could really add value in a relationship is being able to put food on the table mm. and money. And I was like, that's all you think you, you, you bring. Yeah. 
not that's it. I was like, give me a hug because yeah. that's not that's not what Unfortunately, I. Unfortunately, that's the way men are programmed to see their value in society. Right. And in, in, uh, in, in a deeper unfortunate reality is that women are not all women, of course. Yeah. But the societal narrative is that women are fighting for the one to two percent of men in the world right which are the ones that make a hundred to two hundred thousand eh. dollars which leaves the rest of the 98 yeah. percent of men mm -hmm. being treated like they bums right mm -hmm. but you know that's unfortunate because a lot of women they end up actually do i mean it's not even settling they end up picking somebody that they actually get along with that they love yeah you understand me a woman that considers herself to be i don't know high maintenance i would say mm -hmm. right is only looking for a man that can help maintain that, right? So therefore, he may not have to have those other things that will help maintain her spiritually. So mm -hmm. when she gets into a relationship with a man that was only, that she picked for the money, now she's mad because he can't make her happy spiritually, mm -hmm. right? And so this starts to cause a rift within a relationship right. and it can't last long. And now she's saying, well, I'm depressed. Well, you pick me for this particular thing and I've been providing that consistently, mm -hmm. right? And so I think that the unfortunate reality upon relationships is number one, the false expectations and the, the reasons why we choose the purpose, the person or the people that we're with, right? Mm -hmm. the, the, so we're making a good choice based on what our current intent is, but it's a bad choice based on our long-term commitment to ourselves and the way that we want to be loved. Mm -hmm. Right. Because when you depressed and you got money, it's still depressed. Right. Exactly. Like you feel lonely and you're yeah. in a household with somebody. You're still lonely. Yeah. But some people are just settling for having a body around them so that they can get some warmth in the wintertime. Mm -hmm. And that's why most babies are born. You understand me in September because people knocking the boots in December and January. New Year's resolution <laughs> to get you a bay. But all you did was get a one night stay. We know how the game goes here. at High level conversations. Keys. No, but no, it, it's real. But this is where financial issue comes into play, too, because at the end of the day, like a man can date like there's, of course, men that have more money than me. Clearly, I got baby money, my little money. There's so much more money you in the world. Some money. You are in the one percent now. Don't don't do it. You I'm know, I know to Louis Farrakhan once said, he said, I'm listen, gonna... you know, it's, it's not good to, you know, um, think too much of yourself, but it's even worse to think too little of yourself. Oh, we don't think too little. Come on, talk to me then. Oh, no, we, <laughs> this, we this, definitely don't this think too little. This is a one percentile, we, right? First of all, we, look, we. this is a one percenter right here, okay? <laughs> I feel like my smile says, my smile says I'm in one percent. Oh, that I feel smile like says I'm getting money. My energy says I'm in one yeah. percent. The way I talk, the way I move says I'm in one percent. You got topicals on, got black girl topicals Come on, on right now. shout out to Lama yeah, Day. Like, it's subtle, it's, it's subtle. Like, I don't need to be like, I got my things, don't worry. I, we gotta, we have great things. Yeah. We do well. That's material. But I don't gotta, I feel like when people, you know what, you know what the best compliment is? When people be like, yo, I love your energy. Like you mm -hmm. made me so happy today. Yeah. Like when people say that, I'll be like, oh, thank you. Like yeah. that makes me happy when people yeah. be like, your energy and your spirit uplift my day. Right. Or like when I just left California, everyone was like, I'm gonna miss you so much. Like you're such a light, like mm. that makes me feel like, damn. Like, See, damn. Now that's an important thing to bring to a man's life. Yeah. That light, that spirit, that energy. Like, and, and, and I'm glad you have the mindset that you have because yeah. in, in nowhere in the way that you view your value, money is, right, that thing that you project out there, yeah. right? It's like who I am, not what I have. Yeah. Right. And most people only grade themselves by what they have and they don't think much of themselves. I know. Right. And without it, then they don't feel like they're anything. Mm -mm. Right. And so that's a dynamic that exists in society and today of young girls that don't know how to grade their value unless mm -hmm. they have the latest purse or unless they're with somebody that can take them on a trip mm -hmm. and unless they can, you know, uh, um, be at a certain event around certain celebrities or influencers. Right. right now they feel like, yo, look at these things I have, right? I can count these points. Mm -hmm. But on the inside, you're hollow, you're empty, mm -hmm. right? You, you, you're over drinking the shame of the things you have to do to get into these rooms right. and to gain these possessions. Mm -hmm. So you will find a soulless society of women with some of the greatest Instagram pictures <laughs> right. But in the future, it's going to be lonely and, you know, decrepit. So it's that's that's is where I see if this trend continues. But the trend can stop by just having self-love and understanding that, you know, 
your value does not come from an invitation. It doesn't come from a reward. It doesn't come from a money. It doesn't come from a partner. It doesn't come from none of those things. Mm -hmm. It comes from the fact that you, you know, you God's people. Yeah. You dig? And like when God is next to anything, it increases the value. And most people today are missing God in their life, I was just which about is why to they're not that. multiplied. Yeah. It, it really does come down to spirituality and your what you connect to. A lot of, unfortunately, the church has hurt black and brown people real hard. Mm. I, I might say it might have hurt us more than like the crack of a night. Like, oh, okay. Talk I'm sorry, me. God, forgive me, but it did because of. So you God understand he ain't even got to forgive you. I he know. With you I'm just saying. No, because when you say stuff like that, it's like. No, that's man forgive me. That ain't God. God listen, already gets you. No, it, it's real. Because like the communities we created in church a lot of black people when they walk into a church they hurt, hurt it they hurt mm. i hurt sometimes when i walk into a church because i understood i understand what the church did to me mm. you know explain this you're getting somewhere deep so like unfortunately we made church become people versus spirit mm. right we were supposed to go into church and i did that and that's why i'm i'm getting back as an adult but a mm. lot of times getting to that walked in, walk into a church was the people the pastor the the bishop you know my mama friends or auntie whoever and the people became the church versus like stripping that all away and connecting straight to god but unfortunately church becomes a business right mm -hmm. and the business of it and it it because the whole world was attacking us or still attacks us we went to church for the safe place. And remember, the church was supposed to be the, the one safe place for black, well, for everyone. But it was such a staple in the black community. If we can't go to church, where the hell can we go? Mm. That's, that's what happened. Right. And that's what happened to me. Or like when things, when I, some of the most holiest people I know in church, when I don't see them doing well, I'm like, this can't be the same God. Come on now, you talking to me, sis. This can't be the same God. You want yeah. me to praise this God? I'm sorry. This God looking, they look a little bit more happier praising this God over mm. here. But that's not it. That's what happened to a lot of black and brown people when in hindsight, church is within yourself. Mm. Now, church was supposed to be that safe place. And unfortunately, I think now we're rebuilding that. And I think social media is helping and internet is helping because we're able to create now churches with, I know people I know young millennials that literally is friends. We go to a friend house and we're going to put it on YouTube. We got our favorite pastor and we're going to watch church together. We're going to open up. They're going to open up the Bible, whatever, or whatever they believe in. And now we're creating our own safe places. But back then we didn't have that freedom. So that's what happened where there's no safe. There was no safe place anymore for black and brown people. But now we are learning to find that within ourselves. Because for me, now I'm more open to going back to church because mm -hmm. I, I, I understand now it took a it took a minute and God found me, though. I'm going to be honest. God, mm. God, God seeked me out many times to let you know, like, I'm here for you. And and because God shows up in different ways for different people. I always say, like, who are you to tell someone they don't got God in their life? How you know how God show up in that person's life? Mm. Right. Because it could be through meditation. It could be sometimes I feel like God shows up in some of the work that you're doing and the way it shows up in so much different ways. Who are you to tell me I don't got God in my life? And the most important thing to do, the number one thing I feel like anyone should do is find out how God shows up and talks to you. And I feel like for me, the moment I found out my whole life changed, like I became so, like I would say my my intentional God journey really started in like 2019 mm -hmm. where I found I, I was so lost. I was so broken. Um, 2016, one of my close, close, close friends, best friend at the time, gunned down in front of me, mm. broke my heart. It, it took everything. I've never seen this ever in my life before to see it happen. I, I, I didn't I didn't know like maybe two, three months after it happened, my whole life was different. When I say like, I had some of the best moments of my life in that time happened to me after that moment, I couldn't internalize it. I couldn't internalize why she got gunned down and not me. Mm. 
So it was dealing with that. Survivor's remorse. Oh my gosh. I, I, I couldn't understand why all these beautiful things were happening after this terrible thing happened. Like, I couldn't process it and I didn't know it was, can I, it was messing with me yeah. bad. It was, oh my God. It, I couldn't, like, I couldn't process them. Everything was just heavy. Like, everything was just too much for me. I had to turn to God. Like, mm. really just like, listen, I don't know if you hear me, but I need you. I need something. Please. Like, you, you kept me here for a reason. Why the hell am I here? Right? Like, and at that time, I was all over the place. Like, there was no, like, I had a degree in computer science, but I was throwing fashion week parties, but I was also working in hospitality, but I was like doing websites on the side. Like I was just doing too much. And I was just like, this makes no sense. Like what, I don't have any structure, any. My best friend at the time, um, 2016, she, she got, she was so into the church, like into the church. She was just like, you in this fashion week parties, all this, uh, this demonic shit, I can't hang out with you, babe. Like, but there's my best friend. So I was like, I'll, I'll go to church with you. Okay, you know, that's my best friend. And for me, like my friends were my family. Like I, I, from very young, I created my own family. So like the people in my life, a lot of my people in my life I've had for a long time. Um, and she was a part of that. And she brought me to a church with her. It's a small church. It's probably like 30 people in that church. And let me tell you, these people were prayer. They, they were Christians, but they would pray. Oh my gosh. It, I see some stuff in that church. And, um, the pastor was a prophet. And at that time, I didn't know what prophet was. What's a prophet? Is that a, is that a psychic? Like what, what is a, what is a prophet? Cause I didn't know because I sh completely shut down church, you know? And, um, 2016, he said to me, he was like, he literally picked me out. He said two things to me. He was like, the devil uses the mirror to attack you. When you look in the mirror, just know you're beautiful. Mm. Like, you know, just know that you're beautiful. And at that time I was going through, my body completely changed. I went from the skinny mini girl to like my hormones, everything kicked in late. I, I blew up, like everything, just everything. Mm. Like maybe gained like 40, 50 pounds, mm. um, blew up. So he just like, don't, like you're beautiful. He told me that. And he said, you're gonna be, a, you're, he, he kept saying, you gotta go back to school. He said, you gotta go back to school. You're gonna be a teacher. He kept saying that to me, this is 2016. And I was like, I don't know what he's talking about. I don't got patience for no one, barely patience for myself. I ain't gonna be no teacher, shut him out. This is 2016. And I was just like, girl, I don't know. But in that moment, even though I didn't listen to the prophet, I felt safe. And I started praying more and I started going on YouTube. YouTube, I'm such a millennial. YouTube, like how do you connect more with God? And that's when I really started getting into manifestation and meditation now I'm journaling so for years I'm just journaling writing journaling writing and meditating and in those little moments when I would give myself the 15 to 30 minutes I felt like God was in me like the peace like I would literally like run home I want to go meditate like literally because the outside world was just so crazy that like I just wanted that moment for myself and that's how I operated for like three years until Clubhouse started where I was investing, I had these things going and, you know, Clubhouse, how it started for me, I just kind of like, I had no intention to start a brand. I wanted to start, I was good in investment, but I wanted to start a candle line and a fragrance line because I love fragrance. I love when people smell good. Mm. And I wanted to create imagery off of these different like perfumes and like colognes that I was going to create. Yeah, and create like whole, money candles. You know, all, all the things. Like it was going to be, great like i met with chemists i had smells scents all, I, I had it all um but then clubhouse started and i was just like i saw these conversations I've, i'm always the one to stick up for myself or stick up for someone else so that's how i started getting on these stages and talking about money because i'm like i ain't go to school for all of this but i know what i've been doing and it's been working so i don't know what y'all talking about but it's not working and literally things would happen i'll be like oh the market is going to do this, this, because A, B, and C. And all these Wall Street guys would say, actually, no, it's going to do this. And I'd be right. Yeah. And they'd be like, who the hell is this girl? 
And eventually the girls, like black women, just started to see like, because the, the hip hop community was just getting too heavy, it was getting crazy. So now stock and investment rooms, people were starting to look. And I would be on these stages like, listen y'all, I'm not, I just know what I know, right? I know what I know, I know what I've studied and I know this works. I created my strategy and I'm, I'm winning, like I'm good, right? At that time I, was, I didn't even hit a million dollars, but I know that wasn't working anymore. I had enough money to fund my line and I'm happy here. Mm -hmm. I'm happy here, I'm good. And the most freedom and peace I've ever felt. That's beautiful. It, was, it happened in Clubhouse. And you know, it was one of those things where the girl said, like I remember, she was like, Tiff, you need to start your own. You need to teach us. And I said, me? I was like, I don't know about this. I'm not qualified. I don't know. This is not, I can't do this. I'm like, I could teach you what I know. I know the basics. I could tell you what QQQ is, S&P 500. I could tell you how to purchase all I could do. I could do this. This is what I can do. They were like, bet, give us to us. First clubhouse we did, 500 people. Mm. And I was like, oh shit. Met Char. I was like, hey Char, um, we're gonna, we're gonna, I think I need some help. We should do this again, you know? Met Shar on Clubhouse, which is my partner now in Modern Black Girl. Did the next one, a thousand. The next one, two thousand. There was like, start a club. Mm -hmm. And I was like, okay, I'll start a club. Yeah, yeah, I was popping. But here's the crazy part in between all of this, me teaching on Clubhouse, I kept seeing 666. When I said that was the most terrifying, because I, you know, 666 to me, when I hear 666, I'm thinking, God. Not, I'm thinking devil, demons, death. Right. That's what I'm thinking. I saw it. I've never seen something so much in my life. Everywhere I went, it was enough to get my attention. And at that time, I kind of stopped meditating. I stopped because club, it was pandemic. Clubhouse is every, like, that's, we were on Clubhouse 24. I was on Clubhouse all the time. It was trading, get up, Clubhouse. Like, that's just was my life at that time. Research, Clubhouse, back, it was just, I stopped doing what I was doing and I kept seeing 666, 666, 666, everywhere. And I was just like, I was scared to leave my house how much I saw it at one point. Mm. And I was like, okay, something is wrong. Um, I was praying and I felt like he wasn't, like God just wasn't communicating to me how I felt. Like when I was meditating, there was no more peace. There was none of these things anymore. Um, and then on Clubhouse, you know how they had pastors? They had like all these little. Mm, I don't know. I want to listen to them. But they had, <laughs> they had like pastors on there. And um, I found they had like a, I, there was a guy. I was like, hey, Pat, I went on stage. I was like, hey, pastor, I'm having an issue. I'm going to DM you because I don't want people on here knowing my business. Because, you know, when you go, people will follow you. So people would follow me into rooms. I was like, I got, I got, I need you. And like wrote him on the side. And I was like, listen. I'm desperate, I'm seeing this, I've never seen this before. I don't know if it means something, but I feel like it does. I need some help. And this is like, before, there was no modern black girl, no nothing. He was like, don't fear, I got you. Tomorrow, let's have a conversation. And I was just like, okay, fine, okay. Yeah. I read. You know what's but, interesting in that story? Number one, I mm -hmm. don't believe 666 means anything negative. Um, you know, yeah. it, it can be broken down in many different ways, but 666 mm -hmm. is not a, a negative number. No. The devil always takes good and utilizes it for his things. It's like mm -hmm. swastika is not a bad sign. It was a sign yeah. of consciousness, mm -hmm. right? That ancient people had always utilized, right? Right. But, you know, of course you're gonna take the most powerful symbols and make them your own if you wanna create a powerful brand, a powerful right. imagery. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's having that understanding because you know, I just got done talking to Lloyd Strayhorn, master astro numerologist, and we yeah. were just giving a breakdown of understanding numbers. And, mm -hmm. you know, a lot of times it's repeated lessons, right? Something that you need to learn and understand. Right. But being, having the skill set to apply meaning to coincidence, mm -hmm. right, is synchronicity, right? Mm -hmm. And seeing repeated what now people call angel numbers right. is synchronicity, right? right? Alignment. Mm -hmm. But... It is always up to the individual and you decided to apply a meaning to it as a warning. Mm -hmm. So therefore you took right that as a path and you sought a message and now mm -hmm. you gained a message from that which actually created alignment and upliftment on your path. Mm -hmm. Right now somebody else may have seen it as a positive and they decided that 
I'm supposed to take it as this message and then they find meaning in that path and they use it to direct them. Mm -hmm. Right. So what we see is signs are self-created. Right. Mm -hmm. And you the thing the powerful thing about intuition is that everybody has intuition where sometimes we don't follow our first mind mm -hmm. and we get mad at ourselves for it. Like, damn, right. I should have just did it. I knew I would have been right. Yeah. Right. But the problem is everybody doesn't have processing power to understand their intuition, mm -hmm. right? So you either have to follow it with blind faith or you have to be able to process what does this mean and understand it and then right. act off that understanding. And so some yeah. people are afraid of that blind faith. They lack the proper understanding, so mm -hmm. they ignore it. And ignoring your God self is the worst thing that you can do. Mm -hmm. You will always regret ignoring your first mind. It happens time and time and true and try that if every human being on the planet I've heard that sentence, they'll be like, damn, this man is spitting right now, right? Because these are facts of reality. So right. learning, and, and that's what I like about hearing stories about journeys because yeah. I can see where synchronicity is applied. I can see where you create your own meaning in your story to control your narrative and not realizing yeah. that the whole time, right? I believe that work is prayer. Mm -hmm. Right. Like when a person because imagine if a person is praying for a year straight to have money mm -hmm. versus a person that is working for a year straight to have money. Right. This same person that that is working has in their thought program what they want. Mm -hmm. Right. While one person is stopping and asking for God, the other person is working for God to actively produce it into mm -hmm. reality. Right. right. The people who get the least amount of things that they want are the people who do not work for it. Mm. Right. So I was always taught that prayer where right, a work is better than prayer, but prayer is better than sleep. Right. Mm. So I want people to understand that concept, because that idea of working for what you want is better than begging for what you want. Right. Because you have an innate conversation with God all the time. You don't have to. It's not yeah. just when you stop. It's not just when you ritualize it. It's when you think it's when mm -hmm. you feel. Right. All of that is projecting. All of that is creating. All of yeah. that is manifesting. So you can nobody goes to God and has a negative prayer. God, <sighs> make my situation worse. Please, <laughs> please take all my money away from me and make right. me inconsistent in my yeah. relationships in life. Mm -hmm. Nobody has that, but they have some negative self-talk. Right. Right. Where they talk about these things consistently happening. Yeah. And so complaints are prayers to the devil. He going to give you what you want as well. Mm -hmm. Right. So we just don't think about our self-manifesting system never cuts off, right? It's mm -hmm. never not on. It's not just on when you're talking positive. Right. It's whatever you feel, think. Yeah. All of that is magnifying reality. Yeah. Right? So your, your journey is a great testimonial of that power of mm -hmm. just, you know, the way things have occurred or happened and the meanings that you have applied and the faith that you've brought to it, mm -hmm. allowing you to go from a person working 40 hours a week Right. Getting two thousand plus dollars on a good paycheck when you upsell them hotel rooms. Right. Mm -hmm. To learning the education of investing and making yourself a millionaire yeah. and have the ability to help other people manifest that quality within. That's power. Thank you. And and, and it's so funny because I always tell people, I say. You pray, like, let God help you, but you got to help God to give him something. Yes. Like, don't just keep praying and you ain't trying to. Yeah. And it's so funny because. I never wanted to be a teacher. I never, I, again, I don't have, I always, I don't have patience for myself. So like, even in that moment, like when I, and I went to the, like, I went to the pastor. When I said he, he told me everything that's happening right now. He told me, he was like, Tiff, uh, it's a little personal, so I won't go too much into it. But he pretty much just said something big is coming. Yeah. He says something big is coming and I need you to heal your heart because you're about to be very influential to a lot of women and you can't do it with broke. You can't do it with a broken heart. Mm. Like you can't like you can't go out there and lead women and not be pure mm. because you're going to share that out to the world and we don't need any more. Mm. We don't need any more Ooh, of that. Who are you speaking? 
That's what he said to me. Hey, big pastor was over there dropping Listen, keys on you like 19. Darnell, Darnell Craig. I'm going to say his name. Darnell Craig. Darnell Craig. Oh, because he Craig, changed. Craig, Craig was, yeah, Listen, brother. That was a good guy. He prophesied to me that day. This was too, I didn't know Modern Black Girl. We never call so, him Modern Black so Girl. So why did they call him a prophet, though? So I know many people going to be wondering, right? Because, okay. you know, depending on what the school of that religion that you come from, yes. prophet is a big title. Right. So it's a man of God that's able that God uses to pretty much tell messages to. Now, it's not something where like you can go to him and it's like, hey, I need you to prophesy to me. It doesn't work like that. It's like if there's a message that needs to be told to you and if you give yourself over to God or whatever religion, because I feel like there's prophets in other religions, too. Right. God is able to communicate with you and say certain things to you. And for me, I was open. My heart was open to God. I was open to learning and getting comfortable with this new relationship with God. And I think that's why that moment happened. Because again, the last time I met someone like that was in 2016. This is like, what, almost four, four years later that, you know, that happened again. He was, I was desperate. I don't know this man. I was just like, I need something. I know the religion, God, this religion, I know I don't like it. So I'm going to just see and take faith. And that's what happened. And after that, I didn't see 666 ever again. And literally, I didn't see it again. I mean, of course, now, like whatever. But like, at that time, it went away. And my life literally completely changed. Everything. And in that moment, it made me know, stay consistent in prayer. Stay consistent with God. Keep your eyes open. Understand how God communicates with you. Because for me, like, I feel like God communicates with me through people, really. Like, a lot of times I'm able to look at people and hear people's story. And I, my discernment is insane. I talk about it a lot. Um, because I feel like I learn a lot of lessons and I'm able to take and I'm able to hear. Sometimes I'll think, so I'll be like, thank you so much. And they'll be like, why? I'll be like, you don't, God just said something. What you just said? God just communicated with me something that was really needed to Absolutely. me. Absolutely. And I'm like, thank you so much. And they're like, okay. I'd be like, all right, don't worry. Just yeah. know you did what you need to do. So I say all this to say that, like, once I figured out God's ways to communicate with me, sometimes there's certain messages that he going to get to you if you're open to it. But you need to figure out what that looks like, right? Figure out, and again, it may not be this way. It could be uh, many different ways. But you have to figure that out because in that moment, my heart, I was so broken. There was so much going on. And I just, I felt so alone. And um, in that moment, I just, I never, I, I don't really feel alone. You know, I, I never feel alone. And when I do things and I'm going out into the world and I need guidance, I know it's coming. And when it doesn't come, I just wait. That's and I'm, beautiful. And I'm patient. So. so let me ask you one last thing. Yes. Um, if you were to give young women today blueprint mm. to set themselves up financially to become successful, what would it be? Like some tangible advice. Like tangible. what are some steps that they could start taking right now yeah. to start their journey of financial responsibility? Join Modern Black Girl. I'm always going to say that. <laughs> you know, I got to. Yeah. Okay, plug us up here. Join Modern Black Girl. But besides that, no, um, stop looking at money as like a game it's not a game money is something that you can use to really build the next whatever you want in your life and it's important right for whatever goals or whatever you need in your life you need money right it doesn't stop thinking you need a lot of it you don't need a lot of it you just need to think smart with it and know how to maneuver with that get educated on how money works it's you want your license great Go learn how to read some charts. Why? It's because at the end of the day, like a lot of us, there's not. The reason why I, I, I pushed this so much is a lot of us, we weren't born in money. There's no inheritance waiting for us because I'm sure it would be the same structure, the same way we talk about Chinese cultures, how they learn how to trade and do all of these things from young. Google it. We ain't making it up. Like they, this is some, we need that too as black and brown people because we don't have this. We don't have the inheritance. Well, we can start creating that with financial information and financial literacy. Once you get that, start prioritizing money management properly. And if you don't know, there's plethora of different ways to get into money management. There's free, like literally, there's, there's free, there's paid. It doesn't matter. But start prioritizing that now and making that proper investment now. And, and stop 
living your life as if tomorrow will not come. Because a lot of us live that way. I lived that way as a kid. Unconsciously, just like subconsciously, just like, oh my gosh, like, I'm not thinking that I'm, not go I'm gonna be here a year from now and I don't need to save for that and make a plan for that. You do. And a lot of times people from the hood, we see a lot of death, we see a lot of different things that subconsciously we, we really don't think tomorrow will come. But I promise you it's gonna come, mm. right? It's gonna come and you gotta plan for it. Cause that was my, now that I'm here, I'm like, damn, like how much money I had as a kid. I don't know where the money came from. I had money. Like, and I'm like, do you know what I could have done? Imagine like something like Apple 10 years ago. Not that Tesla five years ago. Like, there's a lot of great companies about to come out that is gonna change the trajectory of the world and how we do things. Something is Stripe. Stripe IPO is gonna blow people's minds when that comes out. There's, there's so much things that are happening. Start to infuse yourself in that culture now. And again, I make it look sexy. And there's other girls there too that I'm telling you, I live a great life. I live a great life. A lot I keep to myself for my own sanity. But you can live a great life and still be infused in this. Like financial literacy is cool. But besides it being cool, it's going to help change your life. Mm -hmm. So program that in your head right now. Don't, it's not something that two cool people here are just talking about. Like it's something that's needed. I think we talked about so much different ways and reasons why this is important through everything. We went through everything. We went through it through love, living your life, just everything. It, it shows up and it starts now. The earlier you start, the better. And even as someone that's older, that you, you, you have money or maybe you made mistakes for money, that doesn't mean that you, have, you don't have any hope or plan too. Because the good thing about financial literacy is that you can always start over. Mm -hmm. You can always find another company to invest. You, go, you can always start over because money, as long as you are alive and living, you, have, you can start over and you can make yeah. a plan for yourself. And, and, and you, you have the opportunity to change your mindset too. Yeah. So I would just say that to everyone. It doesn't matter where you are, who you are. Once you can find, you can get freedom to buy your, t you have money to buy your time back. The possibilities are endless. So usually when I start a class or someone sees a one-on-one -on -one for me, I always say, what you doing with your life? What you doing? Yeah. Oh, I'm a doctor. I'm this, that, that. I say, okay, cool. If money wasn't a problem, money wasn't a problem and you had an endless supply, what would you be doing with your life? Mm. And they're always like, well, I'll be this, 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 this. I said, okay, so moving forward, that's the focus. That's the focus. I want you to focus on how we're going to get this. What do we need to put into place? What are the plans that we need to set to make sure you're financially set so we can work on your, your God journey, your mission on this planet? And that's I cool. like that. Yes. I think that's powerful. I think it's necessary. And most of all, I think that we're ready. I know the key to any great endeavor is to start, right? Mm -hmm. The overthinking process will have you uncommitting yourself to something that you should be committed to. Right. So instead of overthinking, because we over audit, you know, assets and under audit liabilities. So when it's time for us to spend money on things that are frivolous or spend time on things that don't matter, then we don't think about it. But when it's time for us to invest and to educate ourselves, then we overthink it. Right. Therefore, we start to talk ourselves out of it and not making a good decision. So we have to get to a culture where we're easily swayed in the right direction and it's hard to sway us in the wrong direction. But unfortunately, the reality is the opposite. You understand me? And now here at High Level Conversations and with you all at High Level Society, we are all about projecting ourselves into the future at a higher level, right? Making sure that we are not of the statistic of those who are easily, you know, uh, um, fall into those statistics and numbers that are have high criminal rates, high poverty, high diabetes, high everything just getting high. You know what I'm talking about? Below on funds. No, man, we're talking about high levels. And I believe this good sister Tiffany J is a part of that high level society that's helping in usher a brand new economy of black millionaires for future generations to come. But more importantly, people that actually have the knowledge within their family so they can pass it on to generations to come. This has been your high level conversation. Appreciate you being here. Thank you. Tap in.
Um, I'm very protective of my brand and who I talk to. I haven't talked to many people. I probably got offered by many. Um, but for me, it's important to have a place where I can just be and it feels safe. And I definitely felt safe today, um, especially being someone of influence with something that isn't as popular, it's very niche. It, it's, it's important to be able to say things freely and it not become misconstrued or there's no alternative you know, motives when it comes to some of the things that is being asked of me. And I didn't feel that. And that was like one of my biggest things that I was nervous about. I was like, what are we, what are we about to give? Um, <laughs> but it actually worked out pretty good. So um, I was very comfortable and I'm very happy that I did it. No, the reason I chose Tiffany J for this episode because I've been watching her movement and I can tell that she has a genuine love for what she does, right? Like she is very passionate about certain things that she wants to see for the community and things that she don't want to see for the community. And I've just seen an outspoken thing that she has that resonated with me because there's certain things that I see that I may want to point out. So for a trader community and the people that are under her leadership and her mentorship and her guidance, I believe that they have chosen the correct person. And I don't think that we have enough young women for society to look up to, right? Women that's out here that maintain a feminine but take care of business. And, and, and I know I chose the right person, even just having a conversation with her as the way that she talked about her journey, the way that she talked about love, black love, right? I can tell that somebody who has the right head on their shoulders and haven't allowed the world to determine their value, but know that they value based on who they are, right? And I think that that's the correct energy to have because there are too many people who grade themselves based on what they have versus their own character. I, I'm honored that this fell into my lap and that I'm here because it's all, it's actually something I've ever, I've always wanted. I've always wanted to kind of have a girls group of some sorts, only child problems, you know? Um, so to be in this position and to do some, this kind of work that I'm doing that's so powerful that I know it's going to change and is changing so many lives, I, I'm, I'm grateful. It, it's a hard title to have, but um, I think, I'm, I'm well equipped for it and and I'm just grateful and I'm thankful to be in this position and we we could we're just getting started you know first two years was market research right and I had to take my time but 2023 it's it's good we're gonna go crazy and I'm again I'm just very happy to be in this position and um, bring other little modern black girls on to continue this continue this movement for generations to come because it's all about legacy at the end of the day, so, yeah. Us seeing value in the average black man and woman is key, right? That we can't try to create these extremes in a culture of everything is built around the 1% or the 2% of our culture. Those people who make a hundred something thousand, those people who have these extreme goals, those people who can do all of these things, these are literally a 1% of our culture. Everybody can't do that. And so we have to normalize, right, the general or the normalize the average person, right, their success, what that looks like to them. Normalize what is the average black girl, the average black man, the average black woman, right? You understand me? And like, be okay, right, with loving the average black man and the average black woman. And I think that part of what she was finding in her dynamics as I challenged her a little bit was a solution to every problem that I presented on why she can love the average black man. And I think that that was masterful if you caught that during the interview. In the interview, I really talked about the money, you know, how the money didn't make me happy. But what I didn't talk about was the fact that I noticed how much my appearance, how much it meant to me. And in a way, I've, I never really wanted to say that, like, oh my gosh, my looks are so important to me because it sounds so vague and I never want to be big. I never want to be that girl. But in hindsight, it's like, no, actually it's true. Like, for the person that I am and how I need to walk into the room and how I, how I need to show up for myself and for others, I got to feel confident in myself and in my own skin. And the weight that I had, I just couldn't be me. I, my smile wasn't pure. The energy I gave out wasn't pure because I didn't feel good when I looked into the mirror. Um, and 
I'm okay to say I, I am not in the level of growth yet where I can look into the mirror and see beyond my looks. Like I, I want to feel comfortable in my own skin and be intelligent and all these things. And when I look in the mirror, I'm like, I'm comfortable with me. And there's no beauty standards, it's Tiffany standards or whatever I have for myself. Um, so I lost the weight um, when I moved to California because when I was in New York, I wanted something new. And then on the top of 2022, I said, California is it for me. Um, and I wanna go out there not feeling that big heavy baggage. And I knew that it was the weight. So moved out there, met some of the best doctors out there because a lot of women, a lot of black women don't know, hey, you're not, you're, you're gaining weight not because you're lazy or you're not working out, it's because there's a hormonal imbalance. That's why you're gaining weight. And a lot of women don't realize that, but I knew from the very beginning that this is why, but I couldn't find someone that could really guide me the proper way. Um, so when I moved to California, I found some of the best doctors that really helped me get my hormones together when it comes to PCOS. Something I talk about openly that I've had for many years, but I really took control of that um, when I moved to California. And I lost about 30, three pounds in about four to five months, um, all hormonal. Of course, working out, because what happens is once you start to drop the weight, your energy feel you, you, your energy is better, your mood is better, and now that, that energy that you, oh, I don't wanna work out, you all of a sudden, it's like, oh my gosh, I, I can work out. Like, I, I can go run for 20, 30 minutes, and I'm very consistent with that. I try to give myself at least 20 minutes a day to myself to really start working out, and I love it so 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 much um so that's really important i want girls to know especially right now in today's society the food that we're eating the the hormones that we're putting in our bodies is not good for us we're not cleansing at the end of the month like we're not doing these things to purify our bodies and we're putting junk in our bodies 24 7. a lot of times our body's just reacting off of that and if you have a weight issue and you're working out and you can't get that weight off, you have to get a hormone test. I, I can't stress that enough. Um, that hormone test changed my life. So when you go to the GYN and you go get a regular blood test, ask for a hormonal um, panel test and they'll literally see and most likely there's something going on there. And once you could fix that, that weight can come off because I'm telling you the weight loss changed my life more than the money did. The I'm telling you the weight loss, the, the energy, the person that I am, I could build Modern Black Girl 700 times now. Big big Tiffany, I don't know. But at this <laughs> stage where I'm at now, I could, I feel like I can do it all. So um, weight loss journey, about 33 to 35 pounds, four months. Best decision I've ever made for myself. Hey guys, it's Tiffany of Modern Black Girl and I'm on high level conversations with 19 Keys. Am I like, am I the second woman in the show? Third? Okay. The only one actually having stimulated conversations that I can take from and things that I make that we good. Mic check. One, two, one, two. Just do something like that. Okay. Okay. Alright. We're ready. Okay. Oh my God. Oh. You're getting good, man. <laughs> you get to the you, you understand me? Come on, I man. Can't. It's okay. I, I'll pick up there. I'll pick up there. Yeah, we Not, all in the love life now. I know. You trying to make me yeah. drop a name out here? You know what I'm saying? You know. Come on. We like details on high level conversation. You ain't gotta be details, but yeah. you know. It's a safe space. <laughs> The world is made for those who take advantage of it. I think most people get it wrong that the world owes you something. The only thing <laughs> that you should think about is what do you owe to yourself with this opportunity you've been given and the time that you live in. Every time has an opportunity for the 1910s, 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, 2000s, and now here we are in 2022 with new technology that you can take advantage of. 
new opportunities that you can utilize to live the quality of life that you want to, but it also requires you to have the type of quality of education that exposes you to the right tools and you have the right mindset on how you're going to use it. See, everybody can go to college, but it's not about just going to college and getting an education. It's about the network that you have because people are more important than knowledge. You can know all that you want, but if you don't know the right people, you have no ability to go anywhere further because people open the doors, not knowledge. See, the understanding of that is meaning that you need to be surrounded by the right community. You need to have the right teachers. You need to be on the right network. And you don't just need to be introduced to new people and new knowledge, but the right people and valuable knowledge. See, valuable knowledge is knowledge that you can use to start transforming your life in a manner to where you can actually see change. I don't just want you to learn about blockchain. I don't just want you to learn about NFTs and DAOs and artificial intelligent tools, new trading systems and new algorithms that you can utilize to give you cheat codes to life to where anybody, whether you're a beginner or whether you're a master, can utilize. Even though all that's going to be in there, what I really want to do is to give you an opportunity to understand life and to be around other people who want to understand life and how to make changes to where we're not asking about what's going to be the future. What's going to be the and we future? put it in the palm of our hands and we decide what's going to be the future by having the ability to shape and mold it in our own image. Block world order are those who want to be the 1%, the new 1%, the 1% who have the knowledge of self and the knowledge of the world and the tools and the technology and who have access. Access has always been the common denominator and factor that separates those who have and those who have not. See, once you gain access, you gain power. You understand me? It's not enough to know where the door is if you don't have access to get inside. If you don't have access to get inside. So, with the blockchain, <laughs> Understanding exactly where to start, how to start, and getting the cheat codes to be able to change your life is the key to the block world order. And what we do is we utilize what already exists to build what we want because we are alchemists, not just manifestors. You know, the manifestors, you, you, you try to think positive and things come to you. And we know the law of attraction and how that works, but the constitution of the universe of laws is not only utilizing the law of attraction, but the law of focus, the law of community. So you can create laws in this universe as well by taking the existing energy and forming it in a way that will be useful to you. But you have to have principles, guides, order structures, you understand me, and a core of things that you actually follow. Block world order is not just about development of you economically, but spiritually and mentally. Make sure y'all tap in because we function as an order. And in a world where we're all distracted and we're losing focus on a daily basis, we can all use more order because order is the first law of the universe. Tap in.